Asante, asante, asante. Haya tuwapigie makofi. Halibu wa hivi ya tatu. So, asante sana. So, now, uh, before we get into the business of the day, uh, we have uh, two, uh, three more visitors who came. So, I'll request the General Secretary of NCCK uh, to kindly come and give his greetings. Reverend Colonel Chris, who are with him uh, here. So, uh, he is not there. Um, we have Reverend uh, uh, We have the moderator from Congo uh, He has just arrived so kindly uh, Come and give your greetings
UPCC uh, had 18 pastors, now uh, 8 died and the, the, uh, the remaining 10 are living in uh, two different provinces, North Kiv and South Kiv province. From 1996 up to today, the church has gone through many challenges because of succession of wars, of uh, after, after their uh, LCD, SINDP, M23, and many more groups, ribo, ribos. Through those wars and the insecurity, we lost uh, 61 local churches, and uh, eight pastors died, and many members. The remaining members in the district scattered in the camps, even others crossed the border into Uganda camps. We lost the land in the primary school at Indosho Goma town. Uh, we lost a primary school and a secondary school in Ihula in Iwalikare district. We lost the primary and the secondary school in Ipanama in Ikarehe district, South Kiv province. We had lost a health center located within Masiza in Iruchuru district. But now we thank God for providing, and now it is working despite bad conditions and the lacking of enough equipment to meet the, the demand, lack of appropriate infrastructure and medicine to meet the demand. Throughout the wars that have been occurring in the DRC from 1996 uh, to, to, to date, um, to date, more than. Six, uh, six, six million, million people have died. This has resulted in an in, in increase of orphans, widows, and the poverty. And right now, they are more than uh, 15 million, million internally displaced people living in different camps around the Goma, Beni, and Ituli. In the way of assisting orphans and vulnerable UPC with uh, with uh, TNS orphans uh, have initiated an orphanage center called Mama Africa Joy with uh, 33 uh, residing within and 39 living in hosting, in hosting family. Even though the initiative in it, in it is in place, there are still a lot of needs to cover like food, clothes, and medicine. So without the situation, we continue working until we began to create a relationship with PCA from August 2013 through the former Secretary General, Mr. Israel. In July 2019, I visited PCA to strengthen the relationship. And uh, in April, April 2020, PCA could have a meeting where we were invited, but because of COVID-19, uh, the meeting did not take place. August 4, 2022, we held a Zoom meeting with some members of the head office of PCA. From January 6, 6 to 9, 20, 2023, Delegation of three servants of God from PCA head office came to vis and visited UPCC in Congo. We thank God for that. The relationship continued growing. On April, PCA invited us to participate on the second general administration committee of the 24th, the 23rd General Assembly of PCA, which held at Nyeri. In the case of the process of developing partnerships through the grace of God and the prayer, PCA invited us again to take part in the process of the preparing of the, uh, the, the, of the installed for the 24th General Assembly at the St. Andrew's Church and to participate on the ceremony of the General Assembly that will installing the moderator of the 24th General Assembly, the Honorary Treasurer, and the Deputy Secretary General. We give thanks for, to God for giving us this opportunity to be with you today. You besides pastors, elders, evangelists, deacons, and laymen, almost uh, of them are not uh, trained in the Bible 
and the third school. Our recommendation to, PC, to PCA is to help UPCC to strive evangel in evangelism and the development action. Uh, in evangelism, church planting, to have a sanctuary church building in, in Goma town, training about the Presbyterian doctrine and the church administration for pastors, elders, evangelists, and the laymen through Mobile Bible School and the Theological University and other different domains of life, seminars, conferences, etc. In, develop, in development action, construction of schools, health centers, hospitals, training center with guest house and the social affairs. Initiate this different project that can generate income. Last but not least, we say congratulations to the newly elected General Assembly Committee. We wish PCA through the General Assembly officials, uh, God may enable them to accomplish the works and bless them above than three and become a blessing to, to many. We wish to the General Assembly Committee that God fills them with knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. We pray in order uh, they may live in a life worthy of the Lord and they may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good, in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, bearing strengthening strengthened with power according to his glorious might in order to have great endurance and patience and joyful giving thanks to the saints in the kingdom of light. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify them through and through. May their whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls them is faithful and he will do it. Be joyful always, pray, pray continuously, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for them in Christ Jesus. Blessed be the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be to God forever in Jesus' the Redeemer names. To God alone be the glory. On behalf of the United Presbyterian Church in Goma, in Congo, thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, is the GS around? Uh, GS NCCK. In his absence, we uh, close that chapter with greetings. Two minutes only. Reverend Geoffrey Wanyoike. Two minutes only. The moderator uh, of the 24th General Assembly, uh, the Reverend Patrick Dago Mutahi, and the Secretary General, and the newly elected um, Deputy Secretary General and the Treasurer, Honorary Treasurer. Na kanisa lote na wasalimu katika jina la Yesu. Hamjambo. Bwana asifiwe. I take this opportunity to bring you greetings from Seattle. Uh, from the church I minister at Kenya, Kenya Community International Church. Uh, the church released me on, on April 2012 for further studies and again for after receiving a call to serve with this uh, Kenyan church, which have got a huge percentage of Presbyterians, about 75%. And we have been there since that time. Uh, both issues of serving and studies are ongoing and soon to be concluded uh, for my studies. Uh, Kenya Community International Church, I found it uh, on a lento um, basis of audition, and the Lord has enabled us to build a sanctuary from the scratch, 
and uh, that sanctuary has been visited by uh, the past moderator Jesse and also uh, the Secretary General and also uh, the late uh, Peter Kania and many others who have come to serve and minister together with us. As my colleagues who have gone, um, who have passed, uh, Reverend, uh, um, Reverend um, uh, Gigi and Reverend Kisanga, uh, as they give the clarion call of uh, establishing an overseas presbytery and as well as uh, ministering to Presbyterian who are there by virtue of green card or other issues that took them there and now they are citizens as other churches or other denominations are doing we would call our church as well to have a foundation or footing in the states in the diaspora so that even our members may feel also at home connected with the church at home. We participate in many ways in fundraising, in support of our groups and even the people who are visited there and the establishment of, our, of ministries, be it Women's Skilled, PCMF, and the recent Peter Karioki came, Reverend, and uh, we held a wonderful seminar on Sunday school. Uh, we are grateful for this uh, grounding that is happening so that we can nurture the community that is there in diaspora, which is a huge resource even to this church. On this occasion, therefore, I congratulate you, Reverend Dago, you sent me uh, when you were Deputy Secretary General, and I don't know whether I will be a, a true prophet saying, I, I hope to come back when you are higher office, and now you are the moderator as, uh, in the 24th General Assembly, and I'm very grateful for the release that you gave me and the support and all other officials that have given us to serve the Lord and even to continue with the ministry and whatever we are doing even when it comes to Father Standis. Thank you very much, and may the Lord bless you for the opportunity. Uh, thank you, moderator. Our next item will be presentation of the newly ordained uh, ministers. Moderator, sir, I want to present to you and to this assembly the newly ordained ministers led by one Reverend Joseph Waroi. If you are called, please come in front. Reverend Benson Maingi, Reverend Robert Karanja, Reverend Irene Wajiko Maina, Reverend Efantas Thandi, Reverend Seth Machari Jerry, Reverend Gibson Wachira Kirugumi, Reverend Stephen Kamau Diko, Reverend Dorcas Waithera Kuria, Reverend Florence Wamoyo Royo, Reverend Stephen Maina, Reverend Nancy Wajiro Mwangi, Reverend Rahab Waithera Mwahura, Moderator, we have an apology of Reverend Edwin Wambogo, and the last one is Reverend Isaac Karioki Wajao Moderator. Good afternoon. How are you? We are glad to see you. Some of you, we saw you during the licensing, others at ordination. And we are glad that um, you, are, you are walking the straight and narrow path. Uh, you are people full of energy. This is the best time now to make your, yourself felt. What you do now will uh, define your ministry. Now that you are at the starting point. If you do it well, if you do it light, then it's like your career is already defined. God forbid, if you fail now, it becomes a bit difficult to catch up. So our prayer is that um, you keep going. Ministry has its joys but still it has these challenges. I know that you know, and you know that I know, that you know, that the ministry has its unique challenges. We are glad to see you. We have had a shortage of ministers. I know a number of you are tent makers. How many? Yes. And the rest of you are in our parochial areas. We have had a shortage. We'll try to address it going forward. But in the meantime, 
accept where you are. Sometimes you start in an area where you feel like this is not where I should have come. That is where you should have gone. Uh, there you are feeling like that's where I, it's not here. You know, there are issues of climate, there are issues of money, and so on. This, that's where you should start. And tomorrow will be better. So, we look up to you. You can learn at a faster pace than us. We are glad to see you since that time. I want to say a prayer for you and then I'll invite the office of the General Assembly and the past monitors to shake your hand. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Father, we are thankful to you for your care, for your protection, particularly upon these servants who are ordained recently. All of them are in their first charge. And we know ministry has joy, ministry has challenges. We pray for each one of them wherever they are. Sometimes they may feel like this is not where I should have come. But Lord, you sent them there, sent there with a, for a purpose. So help them to endure, help them to expect from you. Even where resources are scarce, you are still their God. You keep providing. Remember their families, their spouses, their children. See them into the future. Keep them in good health physically, mentally, and spiritually. Give them a new message every time that they need to minister to your people. A message that will be appropriate to the need of the time. And when it is time to leave the stations they are in, let them be remembered for what they have done. Help them even to co-work with other ministers, to work with the elders and the general membership. If it is your wish that they gain favor by having further education, and even having homes and other worldly things, Lord, shower them with such. We look up to them to even mentor other younger ministers or people who are aspiring to become ministers. It is well because they are in your hearts. Our prayer of faith through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Okay, I'll invite the G office and the past moderators to come and shake the hearts of these servants. To Kiwatakia Mema. Sijui to shuke kidova on Nagani. Pass. How are you? Thank you. We can take our seats.
Welcome to PCA Chogura Hospital, where we are dedicated to caring with love and providing quality specialized healthcare and training. Our general outpatient services are designed to meet your immediate healthcare needs. For specialized care, we offer clinics in dermatology, ophthalmology, cardiology, orthopedics, and maternal and child health, with monthly sessions to ensure comprehensive coverage. Our nutrition clinic is ready to guide you towards the best nutritional choices on a daily basis. Our dental unit covers a wide range of dental services, including tooth replacement, tooth filling, braces, tooth removal, and root canal treatments. Your safety is our priority. With a 24-7 emergency service delivery and a fully equipped ambulance, we are equipped to respond swiftly to all your emergency cases. Our 312-bed capacity hospital covers all inpatient services, including ICU, HDU, maternity, medical, pediatric, and surgical wards. We invest in the future of healthcare through our training programs. We have a surgical training and Clive Ivan College of Health Sciences offering diploma courses in perioperative care technology, nursing, community health, and a certificate in computer applications. For diagnostics, our fully functional ultrasound and x-ray services are equipped to meet all your radiography and screening needs. We also have echocardiogram services. Our pharmacy is stocked with medications from reputable institutions like Kemsa, ensuring the best care for both inpatient and outpatient needs. At our child clinics, we offer immunization services, growth monitoring, supplement provision, and at natal care visits. Caring for your health, we have a dialysis unit ready to provide hemodialysis services. We take pride in our ISO-certified laboratory, offering a wide range of microbiology, phlebotomy, parasitology, and immunology tests conducted by a team of qualified laboratory technologists. Our physiotherapy department is dedicated to helping patients recover without pain, regain their physical strength, and get back on their feet. Our commitment goes beyond the hospital walls. We provide community outreach services post-discharge, ensuring the well-being of our patients. We also offer screening services for blood pressure to the community because we care about your wellness. To extend the reach, we have a Chuka Medical Center in Chuka Town, offering general outpatient, pharmacy, ECG, and laboratory services to the community. We understand the importance of accessible healthcare. That's why we accept insurance payments, including NHIF, Minet, Britain, APA, and many more insurance policies. Welcome to PCH Chogora Hospital, where every day is an opportunity to provide quality healthcare with love. Trust us with your health because at PCH Chogora Hospital, we are truly caring with love. For more information and inquiries, contact us on 0734-192-208 or visit our website at www.pchogorahospital.org. PCA Chogore Hospital, caring with love. The Presbyterian University of East Africa is a faith-based chartered private university sponsored by the Presbyterian Church of East Africa, PCEA. Puea is devoted to excellence in teaching, learning, research, and producing leaders in different disciplines through the development of innovative, competitive, and market-driven academic programs. The Presbyterian University of East Africa welcomes your application to study in any of our market-driven courses, be it at PhD level, a master degree, bachelor degree, diploma, certificate, or a short course of your interest. And now, introducing a master a degree in theology. Our serenic academic location and world-class faculty enable us at the Presbyterian University to produce holistically trained graduates for service to God and humanity. Our trimester sessions ensure you complete your course study in record time. Join us during this ongoing intake and learn in the most affordable university in Kenya offering top-notch competitive education. Contact us now on 0723-799-904 or visit our website www.poea.ac.ke for admissions or further inquiry. The Presbyterian University of East Africa. Finding new paths. The Presbyterian University of East Africa. 
welcome to PCH Ogura Hospital. At the end, we shall be able to thank you and glorify your Father. And for all of us, we want to surrender ourselves to, to you, that you may use us for your own glory. For I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, uh, you come over and seek the hands of the moderator of the General Assembly, the officials of the General Assembly, and the church fathers who come also that they join you. The next item is a presentation of the new members of staff. Moderator and the Assembly, the following are the new entrants in our service. Reverend Dr. Titus Kibara, Head of Theology, Presbyterian University of East Africa. Please come forward. Dr. Joe Kichege, CEO, CAC Media. Anson Kenya, CEO Tumutumu Hospital, Reverend Elias Agora, Director JPRC. Moderator. Reverend Gadanju, these are your people. Yeah, we thank God for giving you that opportunity. It is a rare opportunity. And it comes once in a lifetime. Maybe, Buana Ogora, you never be a director again. So, you try the opportunity that the Lord has given you. We have the other members of staff, and uh, we read in the Bible that work is the rent you pay for the space you occupy. Work is the rent you pay for that space you occupy. So well, whatever you do, do your best. Because you are paying the rent for the space you occupy. If you don't work, Paul said you should not eat. So you have to work and do your best. Leave a legacy. One man I know, this gentleman, yes, he is a very serious guy. Yes, I know you leave a legacy in our university. In the area of medics, there are lot you can do. So may God bless you and do your best whatever, wherever you are. And uh, when you interact with the people, you do not know whom you are influencing. Maybe there is somebody looking upon you and following your footsteps. And more so, you are in a Presbyterian institution. And wherever the Presbyterians are, Hawawezi Wakaacha Kitu Bira Amak, leave Amak, let the people know somebody was there and he passed there. So may God bless you and give you strength and also health, and also the knowledge of the time we are in, digital. We are in a digital era. Do everything, whatever you do, and leave a legacy. Shall we pray? Our God and our Father, we are grateful. We thank you for calling your servant to serve you in different areas. God, we Commit them unto your holy hand. You are co-worker. 
as you always remind us that you never leave us nor forsake us even up the hills and down the valleys you always go with your people equip them with the knowledge and also good relationship with those whom they will be coming in touch with remember their family because this is the base where they work with, from be with them in jesus name we pray and believe amen, amen. so i invite uh, the officers of the general assembly and past moderators we shake their hand Uh, moderator, thank you. Uh, before you continue, I'm informed by the moderator that uh, the GS uh, NCCK is now in the house. I will give him this opportunity to pass his greetings. Moderator of the General Assembly, the Secretary General, the Deputy Secretary General, and all the former moderators and the clergy here, brothers and sisters. Bonas, if you were. God is good. I want first to say I apologize because I wasn't able to come and join you in the morning. Moderator is aware there was some fire we needed to put off somewhere, and that is why I went. And um, when I came for lunch, I got another call from the U.S., which has taken a bit of time, but I'm happy to be here with you. On behalf of the National Council of Churches of Kenya, I'm very glad to join you in celebrating this General Assembly. It comes at a time when the unity of the church is needed much, much more for the sake of the gospel and for the sake of Christ. So I bring the goodwill messages of the 50 organizations that form NCCK and the 19 million Kenyans who are members of our churches, who are members of this church and who believe that we are better together. The National Council of Churches of Kenya brings the church together. We are there for the unity of the church. And our vision is one church united in mission and faith, witnessing to Jesus Christ in transforming lives. And we join hands with PCA, which is a founder member from 1913 in uniting the church and the PCA continues to be one of the foundation and pillars of the council and that is why today and if you listen to the country they look up to this church this church has been a pillar of faith a pillar of hope and also a place where people come to seek direction and spiritual nourishment and as you continue to do this moderator you can count on the national council of churches and the ecumenical family to support you especially as you embark on this work ahead of you together with the rest of the moderators a lot of you who are uh, the emeritus we work closely with all of you and all of you form part and parcel of our regional network. So we'll continue spreading the gospel 
And at this time, as I conclude, we have just celebrated the death of our, Jesus Christ, of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and who is my Savior. And as we remember his sacrifice on the cross, it is good to remind us, especially this period, I'm an Anglican, we have a period of waiting for the Holy Spirit. We know what happened to Jesus. He was sacrificed on the cross after he was betrayed by one of his disciples. But we see him appearing to his disciples after he's resurrected three times. And I want to refer to the third time, which is written in John chapter 21, verse 15 to verse 17. He had been denied three times by Simon Peter, son of John. And when he appeared to them, when they had gone back to fishing, because they were fishermen, what does he uh, tell Simon Peter? He invites him for breakfast, he gives him fish and bread. And he goes close to him and asks him, Simon Peter, son of John, do you truly love me? And then he goes back again to him and says, Simon Peter, son of Jonah, do you still do you love me? Do you truly love me? And he asked three times. Just like the same man had denied him three times. He confirms three times that he loves him. And he tells him, Upon you, go and feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. And I think that's the same question that we need to reflect on in this period as we wait for the Holy Spirit which we celebrate in 40 days after the death of Jesus. The question that we should ask ourselves, do we truly love Jesus Christ of Nazareth? And it is that love that should compel us to spread it to the needy, to the poor, to the widows, to one another. And it's the same love that we need to give to the moderator and the offices that have been appointed by this general assembly. So that as they carry their work, they are supported by all of us to deliver on the promise that Christ gave us, that we spread the good news to the end of the world until he comes back. Thank you very much, moderator. Thank you very much, all of you. May God bless you. The very final, 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 um, uh, thank you, greetings is from the CEO, CIC. So I request Reverend Bae not to give me another name, please. CIC. not in the house. So, Moreta, uh, yes, kindly pass your greetings. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Moderator, PCA, uh, Secretary General, Honorary Treasurer, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jambo. God is good, and all the time. So my name is Humphrey Gadungu. I'm the Managing Director for CIC Asset Management. I'm here on behalf of uh, our group CEO. His name is Patrick Nyaga. He was not uh, able to uh, make it, and he sent me to represent him in, in his able behalf. I'll just read a brief message uh, from CAC Group, and it gives us great pleasure to join you today as we celebrate another significant uh, milestone for the Presbyterian Church of East Africa. I want to extend our heartfelt congratulations to all the incoming members of the 24th General Assembly. 
this annual gathering underscores the uh, outstanding leadership that continues to guide uh, this very esteemed um, institution. Association, uh, a CAC group with PCEA, began over two decades ago in 2004, uh, founded on a shared purpose, partnering with a religious organization committed to Christian ethics and people-centric values, while our insurance services uh, company is dedicated to offering financial freedom to Kenyans in all regions as we operate in Kenya, Uganda, South Sudan, and Malawi. This common bond and shared values that have deepened our relationship uh, over the years. The partnership has enabled uh, CAC Insurance Group to offer a wide and diverse array of insurance and investment uh, solutions, including fire and peril, theft, motor, medical, group life, uh, student personal property, uh, and wealth fund and money market investment opportunities, amongst other value-added uh, products. Our commitment to you as our customers, among many others, remain unwavering, driven by a fundamental purpose of enabling people to achieve financial freedom. That is indeed our core mission and purpose. And we see ourselves as modern-day rebuilders uh, akin to Nehemiah, offering products that help individuals and uh, institutions to recover financially from insurable risks uh, and ensuring uh, operational continuity and financial stability. We also see ourselves as stewards entrusted to protect and nurture what God has indeed given us. You know, with this ethos, we invest in people enhancing their expertise in insurance, financial investment to deliver excellent service. And this philosophy also informs our strategy, emphasizing the importance of customer involvement in product and service development, as we indeed set to do with PCA. And this very strong business relationship between the CAC Group uh, and CAC Insurance Agency is built on foundational belief resulting in insurance solutions that directly meet PCA institution and members uh, needs. And furthermore, our bond is also rooted in our identity. As a cooperative enterprise started in 1968 by cooperatives, mainly farmers, CAC Insurance Group has continued to bridge um, the gap, uh, economic gaps, and make financial freedom accessible uh, to all, fostering growth and development of our good uh, nation. So ladies and gentlemen, as we reflect on the significant um, achievements of the church today, let us always remember the unity of purpose, collaboration, and shared vision that has made PCA a very, very strong voice um, in our nation. And making an impact in society both now and indeed in the future requires a steadfast commitment to our identity as institutions striving to be the salt of the earth, fulfilling our God-given mandate um, with excellence. It also requires engaging uh, like-minded partners who can contribute value uh, to the journey. So on behalf of our board of directors, management of CAC Insurance Group, I would like to congratulate the PCA leadership team and pledge to provide all insurance and investment solutions uh, to support growth and sustainability of your institution and your members. May God richly bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Now, this time, moderator, it's time to receive the report of the moderator. Thank you. I want to invite moderator Gadanju to come and take over the chair. Moderator Sir, I do hereby present my report. Commissioners, delegates, and invited guests to this 24th General Assembly, I wish to share Easter greetings with each one of you and all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is an important time in our Christian calendar. 
the Easter season starts on the Resurrection Sunday and the lands for 40 days. It's a time of joy as Jesus defeated the final enemy, death, for us. Let us therefore appreciate this victory by walking tall in our Christian faith. It is therefore in that mood that we should carry out the proceedings of this assembly. We should not allow any prevailing challenges surrounding us to dim the resurrection light. We must therefore join Apostle Paul in spiting death. As he says, where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, found in 1 Corinthians 50, chapter 15, verse 55 through 57. We are therefore a sabbath, not just to deliberate on matters of our church, but also individually and collectively deliberate on our faith in relation to the giver of life before death and giver of life after death. It's good to remember that the last in-person General Assembly was the 22nd General Assembly in 2018. The 23rd General Assembly in 2021, in which I was first installed as your servant in this office, largely happened virtually due to the challenges. I had mentioned that in the morning, so I can move on to the 24th General Assembly Moderatorship. Having elected me to serve you in the office in the 23rd General Assembly, I was unsure about the future. During the last nominations, as our church being what it is, it is the electorate who decide who they need to elect or re-elect. I was unsure of my ability to mobilize for votes, as my ability to vote, mobilize for votes is greatly limited. When the nominations were called in December last year, you gave me a 92% mandate, over, over and above the 74% mandate you had given me in 2020. That was very humbling. You have also affirmed that today by erecting me on the floor of the assembly. I also thank you, thank those intercessors, some very hidden, who have continuously and tirelessly prayed for the church leadership. I am a living testimony of what all prayers can do, and I covet more of your prayers. On my part, I can only thank you by serving you prayerfully and diligently. I assure you of my commitment to God and the church. I will improve in all areas, God being my helper. I will be your servant and not your master. This being my last and final term, I will prayerfully work towards a godly legacy. My focus has always been, and even now will be, our spiritual soundness as a church, as we cannot conquer anything. If we are spiritual dwarfs, who are not grounded well in the word of God. That is why I spend considerable time in Bible study and prayer in order to feed you, even as I am also fed. I assure you that that feeding will continue. General Assembly. The 24th General Assembly theme. The 23rd General Assembly had been guided by the theme derived from Haggai chapter 1 verse 5b, give careful thought your ways or consider your ways. The theme has been expounded throughout the life of the 23rd General Assembly through sermons, songs, skits, and presentations. All through, it was clear that it was a cushion challenging us to undertake an introspection on all aspects of our lives. It was not a commendation of a job well done, but neither was it a, a condemnation of irreparable spiritual damage. It is fully possible to evaluate how each one of us, all of us have considered their ways. I wish there was a way of, you know, evaluating a deep stick sort of, you know, a thermometer which we can use to measure each one of us how well they have considered their ways. Unfortunately, there is none. So that remains a matter between us and God. Having fully, those who may have done it, congratulations if you have fully considered your ways. Some have we. 
and others not at all. The Lord is now challenging us to now make individual and collective decisions to move on to the next level. We cannot mark time concerning our ways, give, give, giving careful thought to our ways. The Lord is now calling upon us to move to the next level. If we have considered our ways, he, he wants now to task us. Whether we have considered or still considering our ways, the Lord is now exhorting us to say like Joshua. But as for me and my household, we we'll serve the Lord. Our theme for the 24th General Assembly, therefore, is we will serve the Lord. It is therefore interesting that the 24th General Assembly that kicks off in year 2024 will be guided by a verse from the 24th chapter of the biblical book. So you see the 24th allowed that please. May the fullness of 24 realized in the life of the 24th year both at individual and corporate level I was getting persuaded to get the theme from Joshua 24 24 because it also talks of we will serve the Lord but then it is a secondary verse the primary verse is 24 15 where Joshua initially said we will serve the Lord uh, 24 24 it's the people saying what you have told us will do but it also talks about the same thing. Therefore, it would have been very rhythmical. Year 20, 24. 24th, General Assembly. Joshua was getting persuaded to go to 24. Because this 24 was just becoming very good. Therefore, the theme will apply to all households we belong to, beginning with the smallest to the biggest, that is in our church and nation. We will therefore be required to evaluate all our deeds and the utterances in line with the questions as to whether we are serving the Lord or not. For instance, as we undertake projects and programs, we must ask ourselves, are we serving the Lord? Though the theme is corrective, we still can customize it to speak to each one of us by saying, I'll serve the Lord. If, we, if each, each one of us succeeded, then we would all reach the desired objective. A few words there from Professor J.S. Beatty. I know that is something that we know. But we can move on to what I would call activities uh, and achievements over the period since the last, I have not reported light from the first year, but I have mainly reported what has happened over the years since we were in our last GSC in Nyeri. One, as I said earlier, we have presided over very many funerals of ministers, spouses. It has been very exhausting because you are also affected by such. And as I said earlier, we lost a minister and his spouse, a very young couple, Reverend Moses Kiremi, and his spouse Regina of Mogoga Presbytery in a road accident. I would also thank God that we have been able to maintain our presence in Jukwara Moderator every first Sunday of the month, 7.30 p.m. And in that program, we give insight, insights on topical matters of the church and also the nation. We have had a GSC that went on very well, subdivision of uh, several presbyteries, the biggest being Pwani, that we subdivided to Pwani, Kaskazini, Kati, and Magaribi. Several parishes were also subdivided over the period. We were also present when we were handing over Kangema, Nendeni area from Shogoria West to Uthaya Presbytery. Church dedications, I've mentioned a few like PCA Ulisho in Tanzania Mission Presbytery, PCA Malsabit in Tomotomo, PCA Gedi and Watamu churches in Pwani Kaskazini and Alliance Girls High School Chapel. We participated in the National Mission in Sagara. We presided over ordination of ministers like the ones who are here, so on and so forth. A number of them here there may not be very really remarkable, but they happened. 
they occupied our time um, a number of activities where we have been invited we have attempted I guess I also visited PCA Kitengela Church uh, where there was a threat there was a threat of people are quite sad but uh, we went there and had prayer with them and we are glad that the presbytery has engaged with government so well and the deputy president this morning was telling us that sooner there will be a title deed because the EPZ part will be removed rather will be excised from the bigger chunk of blood so that Kitagira may have their title deed and he said he would bring it himself to Kitengera and we look forward to that. A number of other things are listed there. A memorial for Catherine Booth. The Booth family in the US have been very supportive to many projects here. You know the program and lay training and several Booth schools. Interestingly is that uh, members of that family have never been here. But they have sent lots of money to do projects here. It's a challenge to you and me because mainly we want to give money over what we can see. But here is a family in the US, in the US not related to us in any way, but they said dollars over the years. Now the husband died a few years ago, the wife died last year, and the much we could do is do a memorial service over here. One issue, one other matter is uh, we have tried, though not done very well, because you always challenge me, that you want to see us more on um, national media other than CAC TV. So we have tried. Not, we have not done very well, but we have tried to be at KTN, Citizen TV, JK Live. We are still trying. So not seeing us is not that we don't try. We try, but there's, of course, you need a few things to that to happen. And please, you know, please, Presbyterians, we walk in the right. So that's why sometimes it's not happening as, for, as often as it should. I've also mentioned other interdenominational forums where we have participated like the National General Conference of the Methodist Church, the Methodist Church had a serious leadership challenge. And like us who know when you enter and when you exit, there were some games that didn't go very well, and the, the leadership of our state arguing it was COVID. So in a mwaka COVID, is has a bit so there was a challenge, and uh, we I were invited, and we were glad to be part of the resolution. Now our sister church, the Methodist Church, is now enjoying uh, tranquility. So we are glad to have participated there. And may our God, good God help us not to go that path of trying to destabilize the church. Because it will, we have a very good and system that has served us well. We can improve it, of course. But let us not try to destabilize. They say if it is working, if it is working, don't fix it. If your watch is working, why would you want to dismantle it? Yet it is working. You may end up be having a share of a list watch. So our system is working, but we can make it better. We have also interacted with the NCSK, as the General Secretary said in several forums and uh, discussed national topic matters in the nation. How is the church since the past the last general assembly? Reports from the ground are that much spiritual and infrastructural work is happening at all levels. We commend all but still urge that there be more emphasis on spiritual work because that is the way we can sustain this church. This is where we were built as Christians. And I say that our content must be more prominent than, our, than the container. 
and the reward must become more important than the reboring. We must intensify spiritual work as that is the software that drives whatever else we embark on as a church. At the General Assembly level, we have prayerfully and practically remained focused on the acceptance speech that I gave during my installation in 2021. The speech was greatly acclaimed and many have challenged me to walk that speech. The business, the business committee that is now about to retire has greatly assisted me in that objective. However, I admit that it's not always easy to execute your vision with a team that you did not single-heartedly select. And sometimes you may be working at cross purposes. This begs clarity as to who is the vision carrier of the church. Since Presbyterianism negates rule by fiat, that is by order and by one person, we need to see how the business committee that sits between GAs and GACs is empowered, not just to be seen, but hard. I would wish we have a more robust business committee. Sometimes the business committee does not get to where it should get. I wish it exercised some supervisory, you know, oversight. Because even GA officials can become wrong. They can go wayward. Who needs to oversee them? It is the business committee. So we should look at a situation where the business committee is able to supervise the way a presbytery supervises the ministers and the elders there. The way the CAC session supervises the minister and the elders, we shouldn't be left at a state where it's like we have no supervision. You know, I, anything goes. I can get into anything. I can do anything because I know the business committee has no direct supervisory powers. That is something that we need to look at too. to check executive excesses because power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely so the moment i'm in this position i may abuse this of to do that that direction there is a proposal by the outgoing business committee to raise supervisory committees in areas of the following areas. The business committee has a proposal. It was proposed that the, at the head of it, of course, through the business committee, we should have a human resource committee so that we don't just hire and fire and promote like who we like, who we don't like. Procurement can also be a big issue. It can be a monster that in an institution. A procurement subcommittee through the business. Audit and risk management and quality assurance management. That's an idea that needs to be supported so that I also need to be accountable and answerable for what I say and do, the way we do it, even in parishes, although there could be abuse sometimes, where everything I do, I should report to the session, I should report to the presbytery, although I have a mandate of a certain, to a certain extent, it shouldn't be too excessive because of what I've just said about power and what it does, it is not checked. So, the place of the moderator as the team leader must also be enhanced so that he is not he is able to sanction certain things. You know the moderator in the church uh, respectable as he is sometimes he can be a lame duck and he has no he does not does not light any letter so things can happen that needs to be checked so that the moderator has an eye on, over what is happening, a say on what is happening. Otherwise, when you have a moderator who is very exhausted out there, 
with a big, big title and a big name, highly respectable in the nation and in the church. And sometimes he or she is not able to say, no, 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 let's not go that direction. I advise that we don't. Sometimes that would make him a lame duck. A gun holder without <laughs> ammunition. Enough said. We owe our existence to mission work. Those who pioneered our church made great, great sacrifices that we cannot match today. We can, however, do what is relevant to our times. Our resources must not just be mobilized and directed to only what we can see, but be used. We must develop interest in what is outside our home districts, congregations, parishes, presbyteries, with a view of making a contribution, remembering that our faith is not just geared towards a local church, but the universal church as well. Remember when we confess the Apostles' Creed, we say, I believe in one holy Catholic is universal. So you don't just believe in your local districts. You don't just believe in your local church. You also believe in the bigger church. So when you make a contribution to others who are not in your neighborhood, you are leaving the apostles' creed. Sometimes we get so, you know, locked into our home, into our safety corners. And we have several been told that that's how the sea became dead. Because it would receive and not to contribute. You know, the Red Sea is the deepest point in, on earth. It is. We can also become dead if we are not involved in um, doing mission. And we have always talked about a 10% to, towards mission. We must also encourage volunteer workers. I have seen volunteer workers in some places, sincere volunteer workers, because there are some who are not sincerely volunteering. They may be asking for a stipend. But we have seen people who have made their mind to become whatever. We should also think of equipping for the full time ministry. The evidence of some division areas for five years or even more. They have been in those areas. And they have served the church. In spite of their poor qualifications, after they haven't hit the qualification we would want, but they not have a lot of kizungu, but they have been able to board with the people and they are able to grow the work. And I'm saying the upcoming recruitments to the administration should be skewed towards personnel who can work in mission areas. And I know we need to be careful with that because sometimes when we say it and we go and recruit, eventually such people never end up in mission areas. However, those who may have served for long in those areas, we need to see a way of considering them. Practice and procedure manual. Um, the review is ongoing. We have made some progress. But I want to caution that mayor constitu a mere constitution without the spirit of constitutionalism is not an achievement. Because sometimes we may think that we have challenges because we don't have a good constitution. No. We have to have the spirit of constitutionalism, of obeying, adhering to that constitution. Because even our present constitution would be serving as well if it was respected by all. Because it is still acclaimed. You have heard even the president when he was here, he was saying, I have learned something from you people. The way you have done your things, I have learned something. So it is still good. So let, therefore, let us therefore promise to be lawful and not lawless with or without new laws. Church projects, we have continued to steward, to steward existing church projects. There is, these include rental houses, educational, media, hospitals, and hospitality industry. But let's admit that many are fa facing various challenges, which are mainly financial and managerial. Unless we learn to learn the existing ones well, we would be careless to venture into new ones, merely to make a name. We must never learn to start projects out of self-interest. 
there are situations where when a project is conceived when a project is conceived everyone becomes a consultant yes when it is conceived everybody comes to offer consultancy of course at a fee to supply this or that in order to reap maximum benefits of our institutions all boards mandated to oversee those institutions must not only be of professionals but must be ethical as well again they should not be interfered with sometimes we raise boards and we never let them work we want to interfere because of self-interest we want to procure, you know interfere with procurement we want to interfere with the hiring the lazy friends who we want to protect and the board would want to kick them out but since the moderator would want so and so to remain there I start I'm, I'm twisting the boat let's give uh, boards some space but then this boards themselves must also behave because some of them are, are inadequate in terms of the kind of things that oh so the fact that we don't want to interfere should learn institutions with impunity during the 23rd general assembly this is an admission we did not start any project at the national level as we were weighed down by the liabilities of the existing ones we had liabilities like unpaid loans for Mirere Mobasa, Presbyterian University some financial underperformance of CAC TV how do you dare now go start another one because I want a name that this mimi nilianzisha lakini zile ziko bado hatujaweza kuzisimamisha again remember that there was general poor performance nationally of our economy and that would not have supported new exploits and we have faced the blunt of that as the head office because you know we have suffered raids by auctioneers we have our accounts have sometimes have suffered you know ganishi orders and sometimes you have to put up with the shame of such things happening delay of salaries and it is even worse when we have staff in mission areas who are paid in the head office and sometimes we are not able to pay their salaries in time because of such challenges as I said in the morning, we are glad that we have not secured any new credit that will weigh down the church. We can secure, but we have to do borrow very wisely. But the Waswahili people say, Dau la Munyonge Haredi Joshi. Dau is Amerikebu. Joshi, high speed. Munyonge, poor. If you are poor, of course you only one boat. Don't overspeed. Because if it, it breaks, you have a prob problem repairing it. So you start it at a very good speed where you do not cause unnecessary troubles to yourself. Groups during the propose that group activities be cut at the presbyterian level instead of the situation today where they are capped at the pres at the parish level it's a good proposal there is however an outcry of national group activities i have had it with my two years an outcry that the national group activities are some budgets the jf the g therefore needs Budget this is an important component of our work. Our search for Regrettably, this has become the direction that many have taken. Mammon have become a great preoccupation. Some people joke. 
should have become a full member. Eh, si juu kama ni member 39. Ameingia kanisa kwa njia before the readings are done during the announcements in the sermon money money giving and all that sometimes at the expense of sharing the word of god and supporting and sometimes it's not money to support but to do some ourselves some good we must look for possessions but you never become possessed Yes, we must look for possessions, but we should never become possessed. We must also evaluate the ability of the giver, and that's why again we support budget allocation based on analysis of several past audited accounts of generating entities. I also appreciate the recommendations recently by the business committee for the removal from the church books, ambiguous receivables from presbyteries that is now in the cards the president wondered whether we are looking at debts that are not that have been in our books for too long there was an expanded audit committee that we agreed with that some of the receivables from the presbyteries will never be paid no matter how you talk about them because the presbyteries do not even own them they think they were imposed on them so the, there was this move that these ambiguous receivables need to be removed from the books. We also said that some of the parishes, not all, and departments have had arrears for too long. It's not a blanket review, but we are saying maybe some of the parishes and some of the departments have had these arrears for long and if you do an evaluation they may never pay why do we want to keep them in our books so total reversal may be a case that we need to look into so even as we look into further budgets that is something we need to look at let's talk about history and anniversaries we must appreciate that we have a great heritage as a church, both scripturally and denominationally. We have had a number of anniversaries where we have showcased our achievements and projected our future. We must, however, resolve to observe the anniversaries at the known appropriate times. There have been an outcry that against these anniversaries have become too many. <laughs> too many, sometimes two and a half years. Seven and three quarter. <laughs> so that's a matter maybe we need to look at and say, well, in, uh, since we have adapted the culture of the West, there are known times when anniversaries are held. Because they come again related to mammon. We are raising money. And sometimes when you attend some of the anniversaries, you realize that they do not even have they have not even documented the history they are celebrating they are more interested with the guests who bring money on that day so what are you celebrating you don't see anything of a radmark they do not remember who did what but they know who guests who to invite as a guest so let, let's be a bit careful in that area and again, uh, so, but we have anniversaries that are worth having. Within this General Assembly, the 24th General Assembly, we have anniversaries that are sure, that surely are serious, that we need to have. For instance, we will have a centennial of the ordination of the first African clergy. The first African clergy ordained in March 1926, 2026, 100 years. That is worth celebrating because a centennial is not a a joke. The first prayer book, because when the first ministers were ordained, the missionaries ensured they equipped them with a prayer book. So the first prayer book, the Gekoi prayer book, the first one happened in March 2026. A centennial of the translation of the New Testament Gekoi Bible. 
again the missionaries ensured when the first Africans went to do ministry, at least they had a Bible in their language. So the New Testament Bible, we have been talking with the Bible Society of Kenya because this is not something we can celebrate ourselves only. We need to network with them. There is also an, un an oncoming centennial for the founding of Alliance High School. That school will be a hundred years. They have already started doing some activities geared towards that. To have meaningful anniversaries, we must plan early and network with others who are stakeholders of the same. The incoming business committee must therefore hit the ground running on this matter. The anniversary journey on some of the above have gradually started with the review of the liturgy book already being undertaken by the Training and Personnel Development Committee. Alain High School is constructing a centennial project at Chapo where the old boys are making the largest contribution even as sponsoring churches should a certain percentage. We also look forward to the relaunching of a book called An African Pastor by the late E. N. Wanyo Ike. The book was that captures the GMS heritage went out of print several years ago but now in consultation with the family and the lawyer and the because the printing press is no longer functional we there are some people volunteers who are i've mentioned volunteers earlier there are volunteers who are working under my office and they are redoing that book an african pastor so we hope by june the book will be ready because it is narrates the gms heritage what happened but it still can get more and more material presbyterian university of east africa it requires our support previously they use, the university used to receive students from government that will not be happening soon therefore unless we support it it may not be as vibrant as it had started because of shortage of learners but we also are happy that we managed to second uh, level dr kebara he was here we didn't have a head of theology from our church and that was that is was exposing our our students but at least now we have dr kebara there in the theology department and uh, working hard to prepare a master's in theology let's come to theological concern there are forever new emerging issues in the society that affect the practice of our faith the church must try to keep peace with them as they affect us and particularly our young people issues like gmo which we fortunately tackled we got some people who uh, advised us we had also a debate on ivf there, is, there are issues like lgbtq plus and others they, they, they just sprout and we are left confused Christianity, of course, cannot be modernized. But we can Christianize modernity. Going forward, we need to be alert and proactive. By having a theological panel, I will propose that our faculty members in both our universities form the bedrock of the panel. Not that they will have it all, but then they could be the people we would charge working under the Training and Personnel Development Committee ecumenism we are active in the ncck as it was mentioned here we are praying for our very own Levi dagola who is a candidate for the deputy secretary general position may it go well we commit him in our prayers we are part of the sponsor of sponsoring alliance high school that is part of ecumenism we have had challenges at lovington united church where we partner with Anglicans and methodists uh, but we are glad to report that maybe soon our, our own minister will soon join the pastoral team at uh, Lovington United Church. St. Paul's University, we are also part of the governance in the board of trustees, in the council. We have our members there. We are also happy that uh, one of the faculty members, uh, Dr. Kevin Murevi, who is a full-time lecturer there and also the head of practical theology, is our own and uh, he will be giving us taking us through the bible study during this ga so again he is helping our presence there 
engagement with the civic leaders that you can see we have upped our game from what you saw today we have tried to up our game even as we keep our space because again uh, you know politics and leadership sometimes are like fire you get too close you get burnt you stay very far you get caught so you have to balance between getting too near and getting too far wanasiasa viongozi wetu mliwaona hapa tena ukichanganyana nao sana utapoteza prophetic voice Again, ukikaa bali na ndio mmeona tumewaleta karibu kuna hasara zitakazopatikana We shall be giving more we shall having be having more meetings as as mentioned uh, we have had a sitting with the deputy president he mentioned it and he also graciously allowed us to meet the other leaders you saw here we look forward to such interactions for the good of the country State of the nation, I mentioned a few things this morning when I was addressing the president. And we are glad that the government has done much in terms of national growth. We cannot always fought all that is happening. However, we must remind government that there are things that need improvement, like uh, the giving out of identity cards have not been going on very well. There are so many delays. And uh, things like taxes like um, there are also each challenges like of young people when they want jobs and HIF all those I have mentioned so we have to keep government in check breakdown of ethos I have mentioned this severally and we need to look at it as a very serious matter because when people lose ethos then the society is damaged it doesn't give a big good picture of the people themselves road use is one area you remember what happened in uh, Bakasi a place called Mulandi where cooking gas depot caused death and destruction to adjacent neighborhoods we are worried you know there are delays in processing identity cards travel passports pension dues drug business and alcoholism are also gradually destroying a generation all of us must therefore see lawlessness as a very serious pandemic it is started small but have now gained a life of its own we are at crossroads and we must therefore retrace our way so that area is an area we need to address as I conclude, let me appreciate you all for your support during the 12th and General Assembly. We have achieved a lot. We have witnessed God's faithfulness. The 23rd General Assembly Business Committee that is exiting, I can only thank them for the support they have given me, they have given us. Very thank you. I have a lot of thanks to them, even as we look forward to the coming business committee. I'm sure even those who are retiring, we shall be interacting in many other forums. I thank all who have worked with me in my office because they have also supported the success of the 23rd General Assembly. My wife and our children and my friends, thank you very much for the support you have accorded us this far. We still need that support going into the 24th, now that we have started it. And now since we are at the beginning of the new assembly, my exhortation to you all is that no one swims halfway across the sea and he swims back to the original shore to rest. If the intention was to swim across, you cannot swim halfway, get exhausted, and you wanted to close to the other side that you are halfway, get back to where you started to rest. We have swum halfway, 23rd General Assembly. This is 24th. We must now strive to get to the other side. So we have successfully swam, have we? 
there is a remaining half. Let us enjoy the swim of the next half. We look forward to unlocking the potential of the church through the theme of we will serve our Lord. To achieve that, we call upon each of us to be prayerful and vigilant. We must be committed to scripture as that is where our nourishment lies. We must also be good students of history. To learn from the mistakes of those who are before us and to build on what good they started. We must invest on people and particularly the young as they have the present and the future in their hearts. We must also work hard in improving and protecting our environment as it is not just our heritage but also what we will bequeath the future generations. We must never go back to outdated practices. I may have, should also have mentioned the breakdown of ethos. I've mentioned it in every report. It's not getting better. Look at our loads and the many accidents. Human error. Human error. It's not accidents as such because there are places with very heavy traffic, countries in the first world, and you do not experience the kind of accidents that we have. Breakdown of ethos is a big, big thing. Never go back to outdated practices. Some are not just unchristian, but they are also overtaken by events. Finally, brethren, I promise my commitment to God and to the church. I'll always strive to feed you spiritually, even as I remain vigilant against to those bent in mismanaging church resources. We need to be vigilant about such. May our good God bless all of us. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Moderator, for that uh, well-detailed report. Moderator's report cut across the board, the church, the state, and in the area uh, that he has really, really covered. So can we appreciate him once again? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It's very, very clear in uh, all the paragraphs. I uh, have uh, an idea and a very strong idea. So he has done a lot and a lot of details. Once again, I say, Moderator's report. It is not in a particular area but it cuts across the board. If it is agriculture, if it is sickness, if uh, it's the area of display, um, he is supposed. He, is, he sees the church as it is. This is how he has seen the church, the nation, and also the world. So in Moderator's report, it is not discussed or questioned. We usually have a committee of 10 people who usually sit down, go every paragraph and also details, and they come up with resolutions. I think, Mr. Secretary General, that is the way forward. That is the way to go. Uh, we get uh, uh, 10 people who are going to interrogate uh, the report of the moderator, and they come up uh, with resolutions which will be subjected uh, to the General Assembly. Yeah, that is the way forward. Now, can I have uh, 10 people? Yes, um, yes, yes, Gary. Elder Guyo is proposed, seconded. Yes, he is seconded. Yes, Maura. Fra Francis Joroge, seconded. Seconded. Yes. Then uh, we have somebody there. It's not clear from this head. 
Uh, yes, Daktari. Reverend Kinyajui. Haya. Seconded. Yes, Jennifer. Ijinia. Haya. Seconded. Yes. Uh, Edward. I propose Reverend Lydia Kahiga. Lydia Kahiga. Yes. How are you agapi? There are five. Okay. Tulianzia upade ule tuko pa hapa. Tukieda hivo. Nitakuja upade huu. Yes. In the, uh, we, we, are, we have five. Yes. Leverage Bogwa. James, yes. Come again. Uh, George Mugabe. Second dead. Yes, we have one, one light at the corner. Leverage Godfrey Jega. Seconded. How are you going to Seven. Nataka Patatu. Eh, all, all our ministers. Okay, then elders. Uh, elders. Johnson. Jada. Haya. Then Mwingine. Wawiri. Yes. Tony. Karuru. Yes, Tony Karuru. Wamwisho. Yes, Professor. Doctor? Yeah, Anne Kamau. Doctor Anne Kamau. Can, can they stand? Walo wa metajwa. Wasimame, walo wa metajwa. The deputy see whether the number is 10. Okay. Hiya. Uh, Oh, Dr. Ann is absent. Upstairs. Oh, oh, pale. Ah, okay. Nikwa na kutafuta si only. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, I think uh, you go and sit down. You have a convener, or we appoint. I appoint. Yes, information. Jaram balanced. Yeah, we, we have two two ladies, uh, three elders, then the others are ministers. I think it is okay. Yes. That is okay. Yes? Come again. Moderator, I'm saying there is a person in two committees already. Two committees? Yes. And we are many. Uh, I, I, I rule from the chair that we're not going to change. We only need a chair. Yeah. A, a chair person. Yes, Reverend Shem.
Thank you, moderator. I'm proposing Leverett Kenya Jui to be the, co the chair. Seconded? Yes. Okay. Then uh, you, you see the deputy for the list of names, Reverend Peter Kinyanjui. Then when they meet, they will have somebody to write, their, their secretary. I think uh, my duty is gone, and, and I'm happy I have ruled that you know more debate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <laughs> Thank you, Moderator Kalanju, for steering that session so well and very ably. Thank you. Next item. Moderator, the next item is the report of the Secretary General. Okay, take the floor. A moderator, this is the report of the Secretary General to the 24th General Assembly, uh, which is being held today here at PCEA, St. Andrew's Church, Nairobi. Church fathers in God, dear brothers and sisters, commissioners and delegates, all the invited and visiting guests, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I welcome you all to this uh, General Assembly of the 24th uh, General Assembly. We are still within the Easter season and therefore need to remain grateful for the undying love of our Lord Jesus Christ who died for our sins and resurrected from the grave to give us hope. I take this opportunity to thank God for the far he has brought us. The entire journey of the 23rd General Assembly was one which I can say was not easy. It was marked with both successes and failures. It was a sweet and bitter journey at the same time. That being the case, I thank God that uh, the, reasons, uh, the reason has left the church stronger and more resilient. We wish to thank our members for their faithfulness and commitment to their church. They have demonstrated their true sacrifice loyalty and great love for their church. We sincerely thank our elders for their unparalleled service to this church. And we have so many uh, parishes without ministers, and yet they have, kept the, they have kept the work of God in those areas going. This cannot go unrecognized. We also want to thank our ministers for their services to their beloved church. Some have been working under very harsh conditions and sacrificed their all to see to it that the church continues to grow. To all our pastoral agents and members, thanks uh, for defying all the voices of negativity which has demo, uh, dominated our church, especially in the social media platforms for the last three years, and choose sobriety and modesty, a thing which has really brought a lot of respect uh, to our great church. The PCA church has always been defined and identified with discipline, respect, order, and maturity. Uh, to and I wish to thank the greater majority of our readers and members who have chosen to guard those virtues. As we get to the 24th General Assembly, which marks a very special se uh, season of our church with several PCA church uh, uh, mission and facilities, I wish to highlight some of the following issues which are of importance to the church and which in my conviction will continue to build the church and make it better. Church and its workers. We appreciate that uh, our church has continued to grow and we have more workers than ever before. Our workforce comprises of both Presbyterians and non-Presbyterians. I urge the church to strictly follow the employment guidelines as they employ as there are notable increase in litigations and claims by our employees. I also urge the church to ensure that in case there is a dispute, they forward the same to our legal office for directions and advice before they make any move. Father, 
I wish to remind the church that we move from contractual employment to permanent employment which is more economical and beneficial to both employee and the employer. I call upon those who are here to implement this to do so immediately. The presbyteries need to understand the many changes which have taken place, especially on taxation matters. Every presbytery should be uh, very clear on the same and ensure that they are 100% compliant to avoid any problems with KRIA and other government arms which are responsible with correcting uh, other statutory deductions. Where they are not sure, they should get in touch with our offices for directions and clarifications. And I want to say we've been having so many problems and issues which need to be clarified because most presbyteries have been doing uh, taxations and other deductions longly. Needless to say, every presbytery should ensure that they forward whatever they have deducted from their workers to the relevant bodies immediately. Failure to observe compliance has costed this church dearly. Presbytery policies. Our church is one and is guided by one constitution, the practice and procedure manual as we know it. It has come to a realization that some presbyteries have devised a way of circumventing the constitution by coming up with uh, what they are calling presbytery manuals. Much as the manuals are good, where they contradict the constitution, the constitution prevails and the same manuals is ultra fires. We have instances where presbyteries have changed elections rules and cancelled the annual elections. Others have created their own taxation regimes. And still others have changed our MMF channeling uh, processes. This is wrong and we need to respect the constitution. And if this, not, if this is not checked, we might end up with a very divided church. We all have an inherent and defined duty to defend our church and its, and its constitution aid traditions as, as a church. The PCA constitution review. We are in a constitution review movement as PCA. As the process continues, we wish to thank the business committee for their resolve and commitment to see an, improve, an improved uh, PCA constitution which reflects the modern church governance and worship. We also wish to thank the subcommittee charged with this uh, historic activity. We are grateful to all our presbyteries, institutions, head of department, the secretariat and other stakeholders for their contribution towards the review. And these contri uh, contributions and suggestions have continued to broaden the minds and ideas of the reviewing committee. I implore on the GA to give more directions over this constitutional review and allow it to go to the next level as this will push this great idea closer to reality. I need to say here that this report will also feature uh, in the, in the uh, uh, report clerk, the clerk of the report of the clerks and uh, we will also have an addendum where we will uh, have a moment to see some of the amendments as proposed by uh, the committee. PCA integrated system. The church in the 21st century must take this route in order to survive. This is a synergy we require for effective, prudent and accountable management. We therefore need to embrace this as a church, aware of the divergent opinions of, or misinformation. There is need for more and deliberate more deliberate and simplified training on the ERP system. The church must endeavor to operate as one going forward. PCA partnership with the family bank. This is one of the greatest blessings and opportunities we have gotten as a church. For the short time we have been in partnership with this bank with only 1,000 accounts from those who obey the church call. We have made a profit of by the time of writing this report it was about 20 million but today we have received uh, 27.9 million 
which I would call free money. All of us had, if all of us had complied with this, would have made enough money to run the church head office and its mission work without asking for a single penny from our presbyteries. I call upon all our parishes to keep their suspicions aside and work as one. Let us keep the interest of the church before any other interest. I call upon all of us to respect and honor the decisions of the church and open account with family bank and have our own money work for us. We should all be able to see the bigger picture. I still call up a uh, call for loyalty and obedience uh, from the church leadership and structures, regionalism and church unity. We all appreciate that we come from a certain legion, that with studying, I'm deeply concerned that through uh, the various online platforms, we have become more divided as church than ever. I call upon the church to, to rise up to this sad reality and come up with a way to aid this division which might hurt the church even more. I'm particularly concerned about the WhatsApp groups and other social media platforms which have become extremely abusive, full of cyber-related crimes, deliberate, misguided, misguiding, and full of disrespect. It is my call to the church to come up with a firm resolution to contain these fires, which is definitely breaking our church unity. Alcoholism and drug menace. This is a real menace to our society, and it is my strong belief that when we see the government fighting this problem, they are doing what the church should actually be doing, with the many political pronouncements over, the, over this problem, which are not really working, it is time for the church to offer a more spiritual and scientific approach. We need to empower and support the HIV and AIDS, uh, HIV, AIDS and Drugs Control Desk, and we ensure that it becomes a fully fledged department. We need to do serious research in this area and give new insight into this fight as, church, as a church, as it is very clear the old methods are not working. There is no one uh, now who is safe or can say he or she is too far from this problem. We are all affected in many ways. I seriously call upon the church to now do a scientific approach to this problem away from the normal pronouncement because we have uh, good theologians and academicians, writers as a church and the Presbyterian church now give a scientific approach and get a scientific uh, solution to this problem of alcoholism and drug menace so that we don't do and pronounce just like any other person or every other person is doing. Our sponsored schools. PCA has sponsored many schools above uh, owning many private schools. I sincerely want to thank the Director of Christian Education Department for her good work. She has caused the PCA Church to start regaining ground in our schools. I call upon our ministers to ensure that they support her and support the schools within their jurisdiction. We should uh, be involved in the composition of the school boards and ensure that uh, the Presbyterian thoughts are not taken by other people. Also. We should work with the head office to see to it that our schools are headed by competent Presbyterians. Father, I call upon the ministers uh, to take seriously and monitor the pastoral programs in our schools, for that is where we are losing our voice in those schools. Father, to this, as I have been engaged in schools matters deeply, we need to have the religious education secretaries who are LESs back to our regions with immediate effect. This will make the management of our schools easier and they will even be part of the county education boards where we have been missing and many decisions are made without representation. We should stop looking at this issue from only its financial perspective. There are more advantages. I also need to add here that 
or our presbytery should know that we have agreed with the uh, TSC that uh, for any transfer recommendation to be done, it must, and I say it must, come from the head office. Once we rise with you and we agree on the way forward, the TSC will not honor, and I'm sure you have seen that, they will not honor your request until they see a letter from the head office. So kindly let us be more organized so that we regain that voice. Honorary degrees. PCA is known for quality education and our ministers have undisputable record of good education. Of late, they have cropped up institutions, most of which are not even chartered and which are cheaply giving uh, honorary doctorate degrees. I strongly urge our able pastors to desist from being tempted into paying to get these uh, degrees. They are causing PCA to be seen like we have compromised our academic standard and become just like other people. On the same note, I call upon, I call upon those who are doing their masters and PhDs to ensure that they are doing them in chartered universities, especially those uh, doing it outside Kenya, so that their certificates you know, will be acceptable. Again, before embarking on your studies, get to familiarize yourself with the university's course outline to ensure it meets the threshold as some institutions are making shortcuts in their courses, in their course outlines, which end up being uh, punitive to the student even after graduating. So kindly, our ministers, watch out. Church and the artificial intelligence reality. The world continues to change very fast and we are now in the artificial intelligence era. We need to prepare the church uh, to this fact. I call upon our theological training institutions to see how they can incorporate the artificial intelligence in their trainings for relevance and competence. If we do not do this, we will find ourselves not able to reach out to the changed world and we shall become irrelevant in the very near future. I also call upon our university to craft a refresher course for the ministers already in the field for them to also understand this shift, which is real and it is a threat. University Universities ministry. Our young people are transiting to our universities and in their new refound freedom, they, fire, they fight no Presbyterian chaplain in those institutions. They end up joining other charismatic churches within those institutions and we eventually lose them. By the time they are graduating and joining the job market, they are not our members. We call upon the youth and the Christian education department to come up with a more creative ways to have strong university ministries and keep those young men and women in PCEA. If, we, if other churches are even appointing young pastors among the students in order to get them into their churches, let us come up with a creative, attractive, and theologically sound way of doing the university ministry. Jitegemea philosophy. This is our inheritance as PCA and which we should all be proud of. Since the time of our church father, the late, the very Reverend Dr. John Gatto, who is the father of this philosophy, we have been known as a Jitegemea. It is, however, regrettably notable that we are diverting from this Jitegemea philosophy. I call upon all of us to be faithful to this philosophy since, since it is now taught at our university prayer and in fact is a core cause. Let us embrace its spirit. Many other churches which were otherwise objecting uh, it have now embraced Jitegemeism and they are doing better than us. Let us not lose this inheritance. Church groups structure. Since we changed our group structures and have not uh, gr uh, group structures and they do not go beyond parish level, we have lost as a church in many ways. 
We have failed in grooming young leadership in our church. We have denied our young people exposure and they do not even get to know their church. There are new concerns that many young people are only marrying from their local churches only. Then, the aggression, which was witnessed in financial, moral, and other support by members, is now lost. We need to refer to how the groups were so that we can spice uh, our PCA groups ministry again. And this was mentioned by the moderator, and we echo the same. This is something we need to do. Regal matters in the church. The church has become more complex, complex, and with this there is an upside of legal issues. We need to have the legal matters of this church centralized and then funded through a common kitty. Some parochial areas are losing property because they cannot legal, afford legal services or they do not know their right or they do not understand how to go about it. Further to this, before any church engages into mortgages and long leases, they should consult with the Foundation for Guidance and Advice. We have found, uh, many have found themselves in law deals which are already signed. And I want to say this is serious because there are especially some supermarkets which are very happy to engage Presbyterians because it's like we are giving them our free space. So we need to engage and we have our legal officer uh, who is ready to advise on that matter. But when you come, after you have already signed uh, the lease, there is retro we can do because if we try, that is another litigation. So kindly, let us all converge at one point and know how to do our business. Church and divorce. This is an issue the church needs to address itself to. I propose that a panel of theologians be set up to do a research and give a proper advice to the church as we need to be real and factual. We have been subjecting some innocent people who are mere victims, victims of circumstances to more pain and agony above their broken marriages. Let us stop living a lie. This is a problem, uh, this, is, this problem is not, let us stop living a lie that this problem is not with us as the PCEA family. PCEA health insurance policy. Our PCEA health policy, which is managed by Britain, has proved to be one of the best. We now have a fully fresh board to manage the, this insurance. Since, uh, unlike other policies, we do not lose our contribution at the end of the year, the same uh, unneutralized, the unneutralized savings remain as our money, as PCEA, because Britain are only our third managers. I call upon all our parishes and presbyteries who are insuring elsewhere to join this church insurance policy. We would also like to re-emphasize that the health insurance can also be used by all church members, not just uh, ministers and elders. We have members of the church who have greatly benefited from their insurance since its inception. The PCA CAC TV and media. We thank the 22nd General Assembly for this great and daring initiative. We are gearing towards professionalizing the same and making it independent. As the CAC TV board looks uh, for ways of becoming independent and starting a radio station as instructed by the last GSC, I call upon all of us to support uh, CAC TV. Church and politics. The PCHR supports government in its policies and initiatives. PCA remains one of the highest taxpayer to the government and we will continue to do it. We will continue with consultations, cooperation, and dialogues with the government on various matters, and these should not be demonized by anyone. However, this should not mean that the church will lose its prophetic voice or its role in as the conscience uh, or its role as the conscience of the society. Where need be, 
we shall continue engaging the readership on what we think is not going well, not necessarily in the media, but on loud table uh, discussions, ecumenism and overseas mission. We remain committed to ecumenical movement and we are calling all our region and presbyteries to also remain and engage in ecumenical activities. We must reach out to the like-minded churches and be true to the Great Commission, church, uh, morality, and discipline. That our church morality and discipline appears to have gone below the required standard. Ministerial ethics, which PCA was known for, have been forgotten, and the church courts which were guarding the same are no longer doing their work efficiently and effectively. We have witnessed unprecedented in discipline, especially in the social media platform, rumors rise, character assassination, open abuses, cyber building, leakage of uh, confidential information, some of which is against the top data Prote Protection Act, among others. People have misused or misunderstood their freedom and are openly abusing each other and demonstrating a high level of disrespect even to the church leadership. I maintain that the best discipline is the self-discipline. Presbyterians are known for order and discipline, and I call upon all of us to be disciplined and respectful like true Presbyterians. We should all be reminded that um, we are all subject to the code of conduct which we voluntarily signed and which is not mere rhetoric. Further, our people should not misuse the, uh, our people should not misuse the practice and procedure manual provisions of not taking each other to civil court so that they continue harassing each other. Then, there is an increase of matters touching on morality, and this is stating the name of the church. I call upon all of us to be alert and uphold righteousness. The presbyteries and sessions should also remember and exercise their mandate on matters discipline. Remember, the head office does not have any arm of discipline. Discipline is at the uh, presbytery and sessions. The church encyclopedia. The church has commissioned a team of retired ministers to go around uh, the entire church and do an encyclopedia for the church. This being the first of its kind, kindly support them and give all the required information for the project to be successful. And here, I'm sure the moderator will give uh, the team uh, a chance to explain this uh, uh, tomorrow about this exercise. Student ministers recruitment. We have a big shortage of ministers as PCA at the moment. This has been occasioned by an unstructured uh, need-based recruiting process. In most cases, recruitment is at the mercy of the leadership. We need a systematic and scientific way of recruiting ministers which is informed by the various factors in the church. We must ensure that every year we have a recruitment to fill the gap so that a scenario like the one we are in uh, does not recur. Workers' capacity building. The quality of every organization is fully dependent on the quality of its staff. We call upon our parishes and presbyteries to consider in their budget, work, in their budget workers' capacity building uh, budget. It is notable that most of our workers do not even participate in workshops or any short courses to improve their skills and competencies. Going forward, they should be maintained and to ensure that the staff are encouraged to take this up. Staff appraisal should be determined by the, by the seminars, the short courses, and additional academic work they have done. It should be made mandatory that at least once in two years, every worker 
should have at least attended a refresher course if you are working with PCEA. Church and evangelism. There is need to benchmark with other churches or to establish why mushrooming churches without sound theologies seem uh, to defeat the mainstream churches. We need to do a deliberate research again to ascertain the new approaches to youth evangelization. The church should commission a team to research on how to tackle the problem of emerging cults and outdated cultural traditions which are re-emerging and they are a real threat to the church. Staff ministers at where We have very well trained ministers who can teach at our Presbyterian University. But they are not willing as the financial support there is minimal. I would propose that any minister who is taken to be teaching at where be attached as a minister in a parish where he would be considered as a second minister and be getting some financial support from the parish so that he or she can be able to teach uh, comfortably. If we do this, we will be able uh, to have staff or our ministers teach at where tent making uh, ministry and chaplaincy. We thank God for the church has now fully embraced these ministries. This is the way to go if we are intentional in making the church visible and be felt. This is one of the strongest strategies the mission, uh, for mission, and we need to seriously ensure that we have even more chaplains and tent makers in PCEA. However, we must ensure that we have a strong and well-designed course for their training, either at our own prayer or at the real training. We also need to benchmark with our counterparts who are doing better in this ministry, like the Anglicans and the Lomans Catholic, who have got a very strong uh, tent-making and chaplaincy ministries. Mirela Apartment. Mirela Apartment is a project in Mirele Beach Hotel, Mombasa, which was financed by National Bank of Kenya, meant to construct apartment for sale and to let. The project has stalled for the last 12 years with a loan balance of 754 million that attracts an interest of 8 million every month. The 22nd General Sebri was able to start Kairete Limited and part of the, lo of the loan has been cleared through the money raised uh, through this FIECO. The current business committee came up with a think tank technical committee which has done a tremendous job of researching on how church can come out of this quagmire. So far, there has not been a clear direction uh, and the outstanding loan continues to attract more interest for the church loses income which would have uh, uh, been derived from sale and letting of the apartment. Despite the 23rd General Assembly, 1st and 2nd General Assembly and Administrative uh, Committees passing resolutions that we should commence construction, no one should think of and no one should think of disposing Mirore Hotel. We have not resumed construction. But I need to say that um, since uh, this report was written some few uh, weeks ago. We have so far been able now to come up with a concrete way, uh, the foundation, the Nairobi region, and the leadership, and we are now sure that building will commence at a time, because now we've been able to clear all the hurdles which were there, and we want to thank those, the team for what they have done. So we look forward to a better report, and we look forward to a brighter future as PCEA. And we also need to say that the President has promised to support us as we continue with the Milele Apartments. Representations in the studying committees. It has come to our attention there are some presbyteries whereby one person represent their presbyteries in almost all national committees of the church. This is wrong. As PCA 
we are a church of representation. Presbyteries should ensure that no one person in the presbytery dominates and takes it all, unless the presbytery, of course, has got only one parish, so, which I don't think we have. So please, let us distribute uh, positions for proper representation in the church. Presbytery leadership. It is important to, expo uh, to expose the newly ordained ministers to the church leadership. However, we have noted that we have ministers who have not served for at least three years since ordination, that we have ministers who have not served for at least three years since ordination being erected into the presbytery leadership. Mentorship is very key and it is important we read the newly ordained ministers to serve in their parishes for at least three years before being erected as presbytery leaders. Likewise, newly ordained elders also need to serve for at least three years before being in leadership of their parish or the presbytery. This allows mentorship and learning uh, from experience. Achievements. Though you have not done much, we have kept the church going. Part of the achievement are that we have managed to revive uh, many partnerships which had otherwise died mainly from USA. In fact, after a long time, we have been invited uh, to the PCUSA General Assembly, which the moderator of the 24th General Assembly will be attending very soon. We have also managed to refamp the JPRC desk and it is now very vibrant and we have a short report which we are going to skim through after this one. And the JPRC is under the Secretary General's office. We, are able, we were able to give more local scholarships than the previous years and now through the business committee a committee has been established which will specifically be looking into this issue and also seek for more funding so that we can continue with the scholarship program. The other thing is that our medical scheme has tremendously grown and we have established a very knowledgeable board to manage it. The other thing is that through God's grace we were able to safeguard our Mombasa Mirela Hotel which has continued to suffer threats from within and without. I wish to sincerely thank our presbyteries who supported us financially when we were going around and this gave us a voice to negotiate with the banks and also navigate the stormy path. We are confident that there is now hope as I have said. We also wish to thank the Nairobi region who came in handy as the strategic partner and through their input and support, we have been able to fulfill all the conditions that the government and the bank wanted. Finally, within the life of the 23rd General Assembly, we were able to do more presbytery subdivisions than any other General Assembly. We were also able to do more parish subdivisions, which is a sign of growth. I wish to thank all the presbyteries and the membership in general for their commitment and sacrifices. In conclusion, I wish to say that glory to God for his mercies and love. He has been with us, and this is clearly evidenced by the growth our church has experienced. May the Lord help us to be more mission-oriented and be always looking at our mission calling from the Great Commission, I, as opposed to looking at it from the financial perspective always. May we uh, be more loving, more respectful and more truthful, more united, more supportive, and be more and more Presbyterian at heart and indeed. We have been the trailblazers in many areas and it is my prayer that we uh, shall remain so. Finally, brethren, let's not, let not forget that our main and most important uh, change is to win souls for Christ. Read nothing divert us from this path. Moreover, I wish to skim through 
the report of the department of JPRC and the JPRC and it is good to know that most people do not even know what JPRC stands for and I hope Reverend Agora is in the house maybe he can just stand as I do this report yes he's there sorry I don't have my specs so I'm not able to pick the the face uh, thank you thank you thank you Reverend Agora together with your team who was uh, um, uh, appointed the director of JPRC to navigate through this the name of the department is JPRC which in short in short uh, which is short for justice peace reconciliation and creation because most people talk about committee it is creation the foundation of JPRC is drawn from Bible and PCA practice and procedure manual act number 26 God calls the church to promote justice peace reconciliation human dignity and environmental stewardship as such the PCA church believes that God who is the creator and owner of all things has appointed people to be stewards of creation and to get from it the resources needed to meet their daily needs. The establishment, existence, and purpose of JPRC is guided by key scriptures which speak to promotion and advocacy for justice, peace, reconciliation, and recognition that God created all things and made man a co-worker. JPRC was set up to handle issues that call for the church's engagement with the state and non-state actors on matters that require the church, uh, partic church's participation and critical input, both for the welfare of its members and the nation's citizenry. The purpose of the department is, therefore, to enlighten members on the state of the nation and to challenge them into getting involved through training and public participation and as informed, uh, as informed citizens with rights and responsibilities. They have articulated their strategic objectives, uh, which actually anchors on that, and their achievements for um, the year 2023, they have uh, itemized the following. They did their JPRC week, organizing, launching, and reading the JPRC week activities at all levels in our church in July 2023 under the theme, Do Good in Seeking Justice and Peace. B, regional sensitization, regional visits are conducted to enhance our feasibility and sharing our vision in all regions. Then they had the JPRC summit. The JPRC summit brought together 158 delegates from all over the church. It was a forum and platform through which JPRC, as the department, promoted its thematic areas justice, peace, reconciliation, and creation. It was also a space where our stakeholders and partners shared knowledge and built uh, networks. The delegates resolved to give JPRC a face similar to all active church department groups ministries and committees from grassroots. The other one is empowerment where they conducted mediation training in Mombasa, Nairobi and Oldolet and a total 175 certified professional mediators were commissioned. We believe that all church leaders need this skill in alternative dispute resolution ADL as we congratulate and thank ministers, elders and members who have been trained as mediators, we urge the parish sessions and presbyteries to consider investing in ministers and elders who have not yet been trained as mediators. Partnerships. Guided by the GA officials, JPRC entered into a partnership with National Council of Churches of Kenya, NCCK, Interreligious Council of Kenya, IRCK, International Justice Mission, IGM, and Dispute and Conflict Resolution International, DCLI, and other peers and partners who share the sector and values. These partnerships are for synergy and resource mobilization. However, 
in every partnership the Department of JPRC ensures that PCE and PNP precepts and standards are upheld. So they have said uh, there's some upcoming project. They are developing a JPRC manual and logo, which definitely they will bring to the business for, uh, for consideration. They are planning uh, empowerment trainings uh, on mediation paralegal once every month beginning in January 2024 in all regions. And they are planning for empowerment and capacity building in all regions. And they are targeting ministers, elders, women, men, youth, and children, everybody. Then they have the JPRC week, which is coming in July between the week of, uh, between the date of 15th to 21st of 2024, and all parishes are asked to support. Finally, JPRC week, uh, oh, sorry, JPRC summit, uh, which will come in July, 20, uh, July 23 to 26, um, and uh, parishes to said delegate and partners as it will be uh, communicated. This year, 2024, the second annual JPRC summit is on those dates, just after JPRC week, and we intend to organize 500 delegates and partners. Each parish will be required to send three delegates and JPRC chaplain from every presbytery. Conclusion, the main challenge faced was awareness of the department operations at grassroots uh, in our presbyteries. Although JPRC is in the PCA practice and procedure manual, the work of JPRC appears unknown to majority of our readers and members. We have embarked on a strategy to target and empower the gatekeepers in our church as our very first beneficiaries of JPRC programs and trainings in this year 2024 calendar of events. JPRC is therefore determined to engage and empower readers and members both in the church and in the community through trainings and capacity building. We have confidence in the department's ability to meet its objectives in the year 2024 and beyond when supported by church readers at all levels. Finally, moderator, a very brief report from the Staff Retirement Benefit Scheme, which is another arm under the Secretary General's um, uh, office. And um, this one, uh, I don't think the board members are here, but the Staff Retirement Benefit Scheme was established in 1993 the scheme is run by a board of trustees who are erected or appointed, appointed on rotational basis for a term of three years renewable. The FAD is managed by Britam Insurance Company and the scheme is fully registered with the Retirement Benefit Authority, RBA, the regulatory body of all pension schemes and within uh, with the Kenya Revenue Authority. The members of the trustees are Mr. Julius Garoya, Reverend Peter Dungo, Reverend Caroline Mudoni Minor, uh, Jude Wajiko Kamau, uh, Patrick Babu, uh, Ruse Wairimo Tamo, Joivre Kuria Wairimo, George Kahuho Gatia, and Harun Gere. We have uh, the Office of the General Assembly as ex officios in that committee. The contribution to the same to the scheme are expressed as a percentage of the member's basic salary. The member employee contributes 10 percent, while the employee, while the employer contributes 15 percent. A member wishing to do an additional voluntary contribution, which is AVC, is allowed and should be done via the payroll. All pensionable employees and those inefficient under the business minute number 4985C communicated through SACRA from the SG on 15th November 2022 on transition from gratuity to pension are eligible for membership. Membership forms are obtained from head office pensions office upon provision of evidence of pensionable employment. The total number of scheme membership is 1,235, of which 814 are active and 421 are deferred as at that first December 2023. 
The board wishes to thank the church for allowing those employed on contract to join the pension scheme and also adjusting the pensionable retirement age for the clergy to 65 years. This will enhance the size of our scheme. Annual general meeting, the scheme held its 14th annual general meeting on 10th August 2023 at Mirele, Nairobi, where over 450 members attended. All detailed accounts of the scheme were presented to the members together with the policies required by the LBA to be developed and uh, to be developed on good governance. Members were also addressed by a representative from the Britain, the fund manager of retirement related issues. They also received their statement and their concerns uh, noted for action. So the opening balance was one billion. Uh, this is the account. The opening balance was one billion. 644 million 277,175. 2023 contributions uh, were 132,864 and some coins there. Uh, 2023 interest, professional 5%, was 83,770. Uh, 2023 expenses were 13 million uh, 293 uh, and uh, 026. I need to say this is one of my very rarest opportunities in my life to present numbers. So 2023 withdrawals were 33 million 626 and 76 shillings. Total balance uh, was 1 billion 813 992,984. Way forward. The member education should continue to facilitate pension literacy. Implementation of NSSF Act 2013 provisions that feature a higher contribution rate and the contracting out of Tier 2 uh, contributions is being done. Three, customized education for those about to retire is key in preparing them for post-retirement. This is done every much for them to attain age uh, 60 years at 31st December of that year. For full compliance with LBA rules and regulations has been done with all the good governance policies developed and being implemented embrace the ELRP system to increase efficiency service delivery, including real-time access to pension balances via, via our members' portal. Linkage with our FAD managers for better operations of the scheme. Presbytery should be instructed to remit the, their contributions on a monthly basis and ensure that the new entrants join the scheme immediately after joining service. In conclusion, brothers and sisters, we wish to thank God Almighty for enabling us to have this scheme which has become a blessing to many. We thank the General Assembly Office, the Board of Trustees, our members, and all the members of staff for their contribution and support which has led to this great success. Moreta, that is the report of the Secretary General. Thank you, thank you. For that report, we now invite questions, and some sec sections of the hall look very dark. Light there behind, below the balcony, I don't know whether the lights are working or not, because it looks a bit dull. dull. Okay, we want to invite questions, there is a hard over there, it's getting dark now, I can Level Kavuva, and then Level John Calvin. Okay, then we come over here to Dr. Karemi Shem. I will check on that side. Thank you, moderator, sir. My question is because desperate times calls for desperate measures. We are talking of many parishes without ministers. 
Is it possible for us to call ministers that are retired and they are many and strong to come and fill that gap before we do recruitment? Thank you, Moderator. Thank you for the great uh, report from our uh, Secretary General. My concern is, uh, is on church and divorce. Uh, we, as a president of Naomi North, raised an issue with the business committee concerning one of our ministers who divorced. It's not in the clerk's report, nor is it here. So we prefer to get an advice from this General Assembly. Dr. Moboy. Thank you, Moderator. I have a concern that comes into question. In the Secretary General's report on honorary degrees, he mentions that uh, we have um, an upside of uh, honorary doctorate degrees that are lowering the academic standards in the Presbyterian Church. When we were proceeding for further studies, we used to have the position of a secretary of training and personnel development. And I remember very well the advice that we used to receive. When a minister... Sorry? Aha. Asante, Bonanjue. Okay, thank you. Sorry for that. Did you come up on a Jew and ask a moderator? I had a layer and ask you. When we used to have a, a secretary of training and personnel development, one of the things I remember in terms of receiving advice was the fact that the, the secretary researched on accredited institutions in the world. And so whenever we applied, the secretary would ask, ask for the uh, for the, 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 the school catalog and advise one on whether it is the right school to go to. My question is, why can't we have a substantive uh, director of training and personnel development to continue with that work? Otherwise, you'll be blaming ministers, but they do it without the necessary information and knowledge. Thank you, moderator. Thank you, moderator. I want to thank the Secretary General for that elaborate report. My question and concern is, one, that one of the family bank money, uh, and uh, is it possible for now the head office to cascade the proceeds of the money to the presbyteries and parishes and congregations who opened accounts now that we have gotten something? And, and the other concern is related to Leverett Kafufa's uh, concern. We have those students who studied privately. Can they be interviewed if they still have a call so that they can come and fill the gaps of chaplains in our institutions? Thank you. Okay, there is a hand there at the back. Here, where the lady is, the brigade lady is. Yes, thank you, moderator and commissioners. Um, from the report of the uh, moderator of the General Assembly, concerning the groups, I wanted him just to, call, to, recall, to recommend to the General Assembly to go back to the body act about the groups so that if, not, if that need is there today and they have seen it, then we can go and discuss it as, uh, as presbyteries and then give our report to the business committee. Thank you. Okay, there is Reverend Mudongo, Hayal Darusi, and another heart at the back. Thank you, uh, moderator and uh, the General Assembly. Uh, this is uh, on the, what the Secretary General talked about, those ministers that are uh, sent to the Presbyterian University.
Welcome to PCA Chogura Hospital, where we are dedicated to caring with love and providing quality specialized healthcare and training. Our general outpatient services are designed to meet your immediate healthcare needs. For specialized care, we offer clinics in dermatology, ophthalmology, cardiology, orthopedics, and maternal and child health, with monthly sessions to ensure comprehensive coverage. Because we, we, most people are not aware that we have such an attractive uh, health policy. Thank you. Is that Reverend Mohodo? Or who? The heart there? I can only see the heart. There's a heart up there. Yeah, yeah, Simama, Simama, Elder. Thank you, moderator and the commissioners. My name is Samson, they were from Nairobi South. I have two concerns. One, uh, the Secretary General has touched on the, the legal matters. You'll find that our church has been taken to court, right, left, and center. And I was thinking in the era of devolution, instead of having the legal department just at the head office, why don't we devolve it that each presbytery has a legal department so that matters don't escalate and they get to the head office when you're having the fires are burning down there. So it's one consideration that I thought we should think about. Uh, number two, moderator, is uh, the two reports are good, but I didn't hear where they touched on the special ministry. In a study in our society, we have those who are physically challenged, some are deaf, some are blind, let me put it that way. I think uh, let us hear something from uh, that. Uh, Minister, thank you. Uh, still some hands up. Uh -huh. Elder, yeah. yeah, you. Give me my mic. And then we can have two more. Uh, thank you, Monrita. Mine is a suggestion on education and our schools. Our director has ensured that we have a uh, PRESPA for secondary schools. But we note that many of our schools are not members of that PRESPA. Can we consider passing a resolution that it is the school that is a member of PRESPA and not left at the liberty of the principal? Okay, that was Elder Buiria. Reverend Matiko. Thank you, moderator. Uh, my question was on two areas. The first one was uh, on the issue about Milele apartment. Even though in the 23rd General Assembly and uh, the first and the second GAC, uh, I quote that we said, no one should think of disposing Milele Hotel. We have not resumed construction. However, have we considered the break-even point of this project, whether at some point, whether we retain the, the apartments or we sell them, we shall be paying uh, or we shall, we shall already entered into a loss. So my first question was, have we considered a break-even point on that matter? The second one is um, on filling the vacant places. And mo unfortunately, most of them happen to be in our Nendeni areas and, um, and our outreaches. Uh, is it possible to have a dedicated policy on uh, consider the mission areas uh, specifically. Thank you. The last one. Over there. Sorry. Everett Beth, how are you? Okay, go ahead. It's Kanana. Yes, uh, model from the Secretary General's report, uh, there is this aspect of the remittances of the money deducted for the retirement that, that, that is supposed to be done by the presbyteries to the respective uh, office. Uh, what happens and how can the, the staff be helped when a staff transfers? 
and how his money is not remitted to the respective office and uh, forevermore that money is never given to where it is supposed to be given. Not, no, uh, noting that the presbyteries have their autonomy and, and at times this autonomy now works against us. Not only that money but also even their dues and they are, for, uh, they are forever never given these dues. Can we have a way on how the workers can be helped to get back what is rate free theirs even after they move out of these stations? Thank you. Finally, Leverdegua. Uh, moderator, sir, I have just two questions to the Secretary General. One is that he is encouraging us to take our accounts and our monies to Family Bank. And from the information given is that the money that we were given this morning, the 27 million, it is accrued interest of our money that we have banked with the Family Bank. Now the question is, that money belongs to different parishes different presbyteries, different congregations. If you all are going to put that money, and he has said in his report, it is free money. It is not free money. It is money from us, from the parishes and presbyteries. Is that money going to be given as part of our contribution to MMF? Because if you don't do that, then we are collecting money from the parishes and making it interest too. The second question, I've seen the report, he's uh, written that we need to start a CAC radio, yet the CAC TV is going downhill collecting our monies with no interest. Now you want to start a CAC radio, again, which is not making money. Are we prudent enough to start other projects, whereas the one we have for TV doesn't make any money? Thank you. Answers. Uh, thank you. That is quite engaging, and I want to thank all of you uh, for your questions and concerns. So I'll answer those uh, which actually touches on my desk. Then the rest, some will be pushed to foundation, and the rest. <clears throat> Can we recall the parish ministers back? Yes and no. It is this uh, GAC to pronounce, uh, this GA to pronounce. Criteria. So it is for us to pronounce ourselves because uh, uh, nobody can stop anybody from serving, but there is utaratibu about Lasma of Watwe, church and divorce. Uh, read this be reported by uh, in the report of the clerks, uh, whereby. Uh, we have a case of a minister uh, in Nairobi North uh, whose case is within us. So let us put our hands together. That one could not have featured here because this is a general report. Uh, it can only feature in the clerk's report. So uh, this is a policy report, not an individual report. So uh, we'll put our hands together uh, with the former Deputy Secretary General and uh, look into that and particularly that matter of Nairobi North because it is a matter which actually uh, have been addressed by the business committee. On 100 degrees, uh, what is uh, the Secretary of Training and Personnel uh, development doing. I want to say that education has been, been so liberalized. One, sometimes 
there was a time when everybody uh, who was to continue with education had to get a clearance from uh, the office. This is no longer the case. We get to know somebody was schooling when we see the certificates. So this is the problem. Because everybody uh, is in school, they are not going through the training uh, committee, which is okay because things are moving fast. But I think uh, this is a personal initiative. You're the one who is going to study. In fact, people are looking for scholarships and they are coming to our office when they are saying we want this clearance because we've gotten this scholarship without our knowledge. So it is incubating upon that person who is pursuing higher education to ensure that the institution you are engaging with is um, chartered. If that one is not the case, then you have a problem, not just in the, in, in, in the church. The church is a little bit more gracious, but if you try to go for a government job, let me tell you, it will be noisy and chaotic. So kindly ensure you do that. Also, the honorary degrees are not academic. The honorary degrees are honorary, as they uh, uh, are called. So this is something we need to, uh, to, 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 to acquaint ourselves to and get to understand. And our pre is that kindly let us not be enticed by those honorary degrees and very short courses you do. Welcome to PCA Chogura Hospital, where we are dedicated to caring with love and providing quality specialized healthcare and training. Our general outpatient services are designed to meet your immediate healthcare needs. For specialized care, we offer clinics in dermatology, ophthalmology, cardiology, orthopedics, and maternal and child health, with monthly sessions to ensure comprehensive coverage. Our nutrition clinic is ready to guide you towards the best nutritional choices on a daily basis. Our dental unit covers a wide range of dental services, including tooth replacement, tooth filling, braces, tooth removal, and root canal treatments. Your safety is our priority. With a 24-7 emergency service delivery and a fully equipped ambulance, we are equipped to respond swiftly to all your emergency cases. Our 312-bed capacity hospital covers all... Uh, having student on board. Um, groups, yes, the cry is true, and uh, I agree with the speaker since it was also captured 
um, in the uh, moderator's report, it has been a cry. And this is the assembly which can now um, give instructions that this matter be taken to the Barrier Act so that we refer our groups to how they were or where we want them to, to reach uh, so that we have a charge uh, which is exposing uh, our young men and also engaged in mission and other church activities. So that one can be done and it is now upon you uh, to do that. Minister, ministers and prayer, how is it possible? Where there is a will, there is always a way. One of the issues I've been struggling with is uh, where we look at the ministry, money is good, but if we only consider the, the monetary, the pecuniary aspect of the ministry, we will always get it wrong. And therefore, I wish if we can be able to address this matter. The reason why, and uh, Prof was here, the reason why we don't have lecturers who are qualified, who can teach at the university, it is because of the remuneration they are getting at the university. It, and it is low. We agree. It is low. So somebody feels like, I can't. And I want to thank Reverend Kibara. I don't know where he is, Dr. Kibara. I don't know where you, he is. You'll excuse me because um, I've, I'm not able to pick many, many faces. But what I'm saying is we need to devise a way so that if uh, Reverend so and so is willing to be a full time, be there, and then he or she is attached to a parish somewhere. That is how we can make it easier for our ministers uh, to be able to teach at the prayer at the Presbyterian University. Here are the insurance policy. Where does the money, the unutilized money go? It is in the account. And I say it, we have now a full board commissioned by the uh, uh, by the business which is now managing, very competent. There before it was being managed by the office and for instance, for those who know that um, where we used to have the moderator's house uh, somewhere um, near where we are, we were able to put seven townhouses which are being lent, uh, they, are, they are rent houses, and the houses are giving us about 1.2, 1.4 million per month. That, or rather those houses, were constructed using that medical money. Medical money. No one was taken, that was the, um, the 23rd General Assembly, no, 22nd General Assembly. So that, that we have that money, that money is there. And then after some time, once, and I'm sure they'll be able to present their accounts here today, I mean, uh, when the accounts will be presented, you will be able to see how they have fared, how much money they have been able to save. And then the business committee working with them will know how to go about it. But this is a good scheme because other schemes, for instance, you know they have many problems. For instance, and for those who are working with the insurance here, they know, if you go to any hospital today, and you happen to have had a sickness for one month, it is said to be a pre-existing condition. At the moment they call your condition pre-existing, then they have a cap of the amount of money, uh, about 300 and some money, which they can only pay for you. This is wrong. That is not the case with our policy. 
our policy, we are the people who determines how to utilize that money. So they are only, you know, managing our funds, but not controlling on how we are to use this money. So uh, it is good for us to keep talking about it. We've talked about it. We've talked about it. And please, clerks, once you get information, pass, it, pass the information to everybody. Don't keep that information for yourselves and to yourself. So let us keep sensitizing our people. Legal matters, yes, can we have it developed? Yes. Again, and uh, I'm sure our legal officer is here. She had a very good um, plan on how we can be able to devolve this. How, however, her plan was the, the, the wakilis who are down there who will be working with particular regions and particular presbyteries be sourced from our legal office. Why? So that you are also cautioned against being um, overcharged or extorted by the lawyers because they will be able to argue and to say this is how you are going to charge our client and our charge. So it is important uh, for us to support uh, um, and to hear and uh, this goes to the business so that they consider the request by the legal officer so that the same can be defaulted. But if we just take lawyers and uh, uh, advocates there, we might end up being overcharged and uh, without you know, any cap, you know, uh, proper understanding on how these issues should go. Special Ministry, yes, I agree. This one was conspicuously missing on my report and on the report of the moderator. We apologize. We need to look into this because, yes, although it is missing, yes, we are still continuing with the Special Ministry and we are doing so many things uh, uh, in the special ministry and our church continues to uh, focus on that. Education, uh, whether we can have a resolution that it is a school which is a member of PRESPA and not the, the teacher. I, I think this one, I can push it to the Christian education who will be reporting uh, so that they can uh, consider this and advise us on the way forward. Mirela Hotel, have we considered the break-even point? Yes, we have. We had a technical committee uh, who have been working and they have really worked together with the foundation and also the office. And when we say now we know we are somewhere, we know the risks, we know all the challenges. We know how best we can be able now to progress. We have considered all that. And we need to support this uh, initiative where we are. Falcon stations, have you have a dedicated policy on recruitment? That is exactly what um, uh, my report is suggesting, that we have a policy, you know, scientific, you know, uh, clear how we are recruiting because it should be a continuous process, not just us thinking, now we can take, now we cannot take. That is uh, long, and that is what has led us to the problem we are in. Remittances deducted for retirement. This is a big problem because, and uh, please ministers, look at what is happening in your presbyteries. Ensure, and I repeat, ensure that your money is deducted and forwarded. If you don't do that, and then after some time you write to the Secretary General, Secretary General saying, I left this, or this presbytery, or this, and it was never paid, already know that you have lost a lot of interest then those people I'm lighting to are not the ones you are working with. So it takes a long time, 
a long time. So kindly, I'm calling upon all presbyteries. Please stop punishing your workers. Stop punishing your workers. Ensure that you, uh, you pay those deductions. One, th one thing we have done as a head office, even when we don't get our salaries on time, we always ensure that the retro money which uh, we receive there, it first goes to the statutory deductions so that we don't have arrears, we don't have any problem with the, with the government. And also for our workers because we know it will affect them. How I pray that the presbyteries can be able also to put these deductions, the statutory deductions, as a priority before you even get your other allowances, get your remittances done because I, understand, I know it will cost you suffer. The only thing I disagree with a person who, um, uh, who said that, um, yes, we don't know what to do because presbyteries are autonomous. That is wrong. Presbyteries are not autonomous. They are part of the Presbyterian Church of East Africa. We use the same pin. Right now you know the problems you are going through. Uh, you cause accident anywhere. You cause issues. Who is being taken to court? It is the Secretary General. Who is being harassed? Us. You know, the auctioneers are going where? They are not coming to you. They are coming to the head office, even on matters we do not know. Presbyteries are not autonomous. Yes, they have their duties, they have their laws, but they are not autonomous. So the word autonomy uh, is not right. So we need to work together because most of these issues, we use the same um, uh, system, the same uh, katiba, the same uh, pin, so let us understand that. CAC radio, are we prudent in talking about starting uh, uh, a CAC radio, whereas CAC TV is not giving us money? Yes, CAC TV is not giving us money. We are working on its um, uh, revolution, if I can call it so, so that it starts earning us money. We are doing our best. The issue of the CAC radio moderator is a resolution which was done in the last GSC, and it is the one they are still following up. And uh, they were able to bring a report to the uh, um, business committee, and they were able to convince the business committee that is the way to go. So that is the the, 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 the threat they are following and we wish them well. So thank you so much moderator, those, are the, those were the questions. Thank you, thank you. I, I think we are done with that phase um, and since there is still the resolutions, I guess you could move to them. <laughs> I was trying to to some assault. <laughs> Okay, Reverend Joe, you have a comment? Thank you, Moderator, sir. It's just a clarification on the issue of restructuring the church group. And matter of altering the constitution or a resolution of the General Assembly is constitutionally taken to the Presbyteries through the Barrier Act, taken to the Presbyteries by the General Assembly. Recently, I saw a letter come to our Presbytery New Nairobi University Presbytery from the Business Committee purporting to bring that issue under a barrier act from the Business Committee. That 
is an illegality. So, this issue, as it was suggested by one of our senior ministers, the Reverend Samuel Veuri, should be taken to the presbyteries by this General Assembly to, through the Barrier Act. Not like I have heard it being suggested. Not with a few of the presbyteries changing it, but with a few of the presbyteries discussing it and defying this assembly accordingly. The presbyteries can change all resolve not to change. That is the clarification, moderator, sir. Point made. Thank you, sir. And you are right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. There are still a few hands. Elder Guyo. Thank you. Thank you, moderator, sir. My comment is on the ERP. The ERP is made up of several modules. Some modules are usable in some places and may be required in some places, but may not be required in some other places. It is therefore, uh, 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 requires very careful consideration when we put ourselves all of us in the same basket. And also, I am made to understand that those modules require licenses. Who are the parishes going to pay their own licenses? Mod, uh, presbyteries, their own licenses? This is something that needs a lot of clarification. I want to really imagine that when like this morning, we had our Deputy Secretary General vehicle, official vehicle being commissioned, which is actually a bigger vehicle than he was using when he was in our office. Because the distances and the efficiency required is more. I want this ERP to be reconsidered. Because it may be required in the head office, but it may not be useful in the parish. So, very serious consideration need to be made and the cost of it. There's a hat there. Okay. Uh, my name is Michael. Uh, my question is, I saw in the report of the Secretary General that uh, uh, the Minere apartment is having a loan of 734 million again, which is accumulating 8 million per month in terms of interest. If you calculate cumulatively, 8 million per month times 12, that is 100 million. And uh, much as we are happy that you have gotten a check of 20 million, you can see this matter. Now my question is, as a church, because God has given us that we are privileged that every Sunday we have to collect money. I would like to know how much money do we collect per week and per month so that then we ask ourselves, where are we? And I'm trying to imagine because I have some six years ago, I don't know, we were told we collect about 700 million per month. So if now maybe we are collecting a billion in a month, then why should we suffer? because of 734 million, mm -hmm. uh, which is just a one Sunday event. Okay. Okay. Reverend uh, Joru and Dr. Kadairo, quick comments, please. Get a mic close to Reverend Dr. Kadairo. Thank you, moderator and the GA. Uh, mine is on the issue of artificial intelligence which is a reality. Artificial intelligence is a demand driven. It's just like the, the phone which came in when they were introduced in Kenya 
on the issue of WhatsApp or the issues that we are doing. And then they, I find it as if it is something which is demand driven, but not something to be put uh, to everybody when you don't actually require it. So when I find it that we are talking that we are putting it to institution, to where and whatever, you will find the essentially the, the, the issue of uh, of technology, the issue of technology like this artificial intelligence, it will just come like the way we are fighting WhatsApp. Nobody actually forced us to be using WhatsApp. Nobody actually was forced us actually to be using the phone that we are using today because it's actually come to your desk whether you like it or not. So I don't find it viable when we are trying to, we can actually try to introduce it and encourage, but not actually to enforce it. Moderator Sir and the General Assembly, I want to comment on uh, the morality and the discipline of the church. I don't know whether it has to do with the way we, we pick our cadres for eldership or ministers, or to do with the recruitment, the way we mentor them, the way we induct them. Because as it was in the, in the report, the dignity of the church has been lowered by some of us, not keeping to our ethics. And the, the church needs to re-examine, particularly the appointment committee, uh, for the way we pick our candidates and the, the whole issue of training. The, the, the other comment I wanted to make was about the, the mediation. Mediation, I have found it to be a tool in the ministry and also the skills that can help one. It's unfortunate that I, I did my training when I have already retired. But for the last four years, I have been an accredited uh, mediator. I have the very many people. It has also helped me myself uh, to, to, to grow. So I would encourage, or the assembly should encourage, particularly those who have been already been, uh, been trained to seek for accreditation. Thank you, Moderator. Uh, we are done. Unless there are any quick comments from the Secretary General, I think we can move to the resolutions unless there is anything you would want to comment on. Uh, thank you, Moderator. Uh, normally, the comments, um, uh, you know, are comments, but, you know, uh, yes, for the ERP. Uh, we've really um, been taken through a lot of training and uh, Elder Guyo, you attested to that, that we've been taken through so many things until when the business found this is the way to go. And uh, I wish we would stick to that. The other one is uh, yes, and I think the moderator pronounced it very well. When we were sending letters to the presbyteries, the moderator said, I don't know how many times, this is not a barrier act issue. It was an exercise amongst ourselves to collect views so that after the views are brought together, they would come to this general assembly and we take them now to the barrier act through the process. So if there is a presbytery, I had uh, uh, a lobbyist, you know, uh, that was long. That was the long information because I said, as we'll be receiving the report of the clerks, we will have an addendum so that uh, all what they have been able to bring together now is brought to this uh, General Assembly for, uh, you know, uh, f uh, for onward transmission so that they can be taken finally to the Barrier Act. So uh, that was a long information if that is the information which was brought. Artificial intelligence, I am a teacher and I teach and every faculty now is required to harmonize itself. There is a great shift. Now let me talk as a teacher and uh, there is a great shift 
And this is not something to be compared at all at all with what's up. No. This is deeper. So the way we research is changing. The way we analyze issues is changing. The way we harmonize the various faculties is changing. Many prof um, uh, professional areas are dying and they will die. Within the next uh, five years, there are some professions which are going to disappear completely. So please, let us not take this in a very lackadaisical way. This is a serious issue. And every, uh, for instance, for those who are doing law, because that is one area, they are told you must now harmonize your running with uh, artificial intelligence as a matter of urgency. So please, we need to, to understand what it means. And as a teacher, I, I say that we need to look into that and we need to familiarize uh, ourselves with this because so many things are going, the way we do things, even, you know, at our own level, it is going to have a very big shift. And that is the reason why the pastoral agents need also to understand, need also to understand how things are going to be done going forward. So I wish to just mention on that, they were comments. And moderator, these are the resolutions. This GA received the report of the Secretary General with thanks to God for the job well done. Taken. This GA welcomes the Enterprise Resource Planning System in its implementation stage. Further, this GA instructs that all concerned to embrace this fully once it is rolled out. Taken. This GA, thank God for the far we have gone with the Family Bank Partnership for uniformity and reaping maximum benefits. All church entities are instructed to open accounts with Family Bank without any further delay. Taken. Yes? Have a We would uh, rather we edit it to read the GA thanks God for the far we have gone with the Family Bank Partnership for uniformity and reaping maximum benefits. All such entities are encouraged, not instructed, to open accounts with the Family Bank, not without any further delay. Encouraged to open account with the Family Bank. Let us go into the competitive market and be allowed to choose the best suitor for ourselves. Thank you. Correction accepted? Yes. Okay. okay. This GA notes with great concern the misuse of social media platforms resourcing to cyberbullying and character assassination. This General Assembly therefore instructs all church court to deal with members found misusing social media platforms are the detriment of the church and its members. Taken? Taken? Yes. How is divided? Taken? Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> where the scale falls. <laughs> uh huh. Let, let me hear. Last level, Muyambo. Bench moderator, sir, uh, that resolution has no guidance and there's no measurement for what is social media abuse and one can be victimized. So, as a staff and also as a member of this church, I will not take it. It's very dangerous, very dangerous. Okay, again, the resolution is read. Is it taken? Looks like we shall have a vote. Looks like we shall have a vote. But a bit of discussion, Dr. Mobui. Thank you, moderator and fellow commissioners. The, the reason why at uh, Arusha, moderator, this particular matter was 
discussed and reverted to be a pastoral matter is because we knew at the court level it would become a problem. And we left the moderator at the office of the General Assembly to take it and handle it pastorally at individual, individual levels. You have the right to summon me if I use uh, a language that is unbecoming on social media on matters pertaining to the, site, to the church. But uh, having a resolution will put us in the presbyteries at a very awkward position because some of us involved are actually officials of the presbytery. Thank you, Modric. In the contrary view? So that we can ask again whether to take it or not. I have heard views from one side. I would want to hear views from the other side. Then we can take the vote. Reverend Karo Maina. Thank you, moderator sir, and the General Assembly. Uh, my, my thinking is that we need to consider this resolution, even considering the larger church and where we are in the digital world. If caution is not taken, and especially with the times of uh, data protection, if we are not careful as a church, we will not only affect ourselves, but we also may find ourselves as a church in a situation that may compromise our integrity as a church. Uh, cases of Photoshop have been very frequent, whereby people are maligning other people by creating images that are false in the cyber, and actually uh, using the, uh, the mitandao. So I think we need to look at that resolution beyond not just ourselves as the General Assembly members. Once again, take it. Let, let me test whether I can assess the acceptability or non-acceptability. How many are for the resolution? Raise your hands. Substantial number are four. That is four. Munataka ipite. Those against? Ah, this is a draw. Uh, I don't know how, when it gets there what we should do. <laughs> Unless we do a real vote. Unless we do a real vote, I doubt we are, we are going to resolve this matter very fast. Because uh, opinions for and against are almost at par. There are several moderator sirs. I see a hat there at the back. Be behind Matiko, Reverend Kauge. Uh, thank you, moderator. That resolution at face value looks very good. But is it in tandem with the law of the country? What will be the Michelin, uh, uh, Michelin Lord? Shall we involve the DCIs in our presbytery to do proper investigation? Shall we also apply the ethics to be able to uh, scrutinize the, the message or what has been written? I would propose that we further give it a critical thought. It is good. The observation of Secretary General is actually good, but can we give it a critical thought rather than passing an institution, a resolution that is going to bring war in the presbyteries? It is good, but if it can be given a committee to think further on it, it can be good to this church. Reverend Maura. Moderator, sir, I want to give it a different approach from what the other speakers have said. Because if we give it the openness some are saying, then because this is General Assembly, then we, we need to keep it open so that if my brother here does something wrong to me, if I take him to court, I will not be subjective to the practice and procedure that I have to withdraw first, yet he offended me. If we are fearing to pass it here, then 
we are anticipating we shall keep on abusing, we shall keep on doing other bad things, yet we are ministers and elders and we are preaching uh, what the Bible should, uh, what, what we are preaching what we need to do. We are the people to lead. So if it cannot work as you are, pro, as you, as you are now, uh, we, you have seen the, the house is divided, then we can take it another level. We propose that if you take somebody to court, you will not be subjected to any scrutiny by your presbytery or the business committee because you are defending yourself. Otherwise, I'm proposing we take it as it is. Dr. Joya. What order do you have? Shout, we can hear. Dr. Joya should not be allowed to speak in this assembly, having walked out on the moderator area in the day. It would be an abuse of this court for you to allow Dr. Joya to speak in this assembly. Thank you. I, I, I demanded that he bows. Did he bow? Yes. <laughs> he, he did bow, and uh, I, I don't want to presume he walked out on me. Yes. I don't want to presume he would dare. <laughs> Maybe he was on a, on a need. He needed to go out at that point. Yes. And since he bowed, Dr. Joya, you have your mic. Sorry, I didn't know I would become the, 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 the subject of the topic because the topic was by the Secretary General. Uh, but now it means a shift in topic. But if you want to make me a topic, let's bring it as an agenda. Okay, you proceed with the... But, now, <laughs> <laughs> but moderator, I am very happy for this debate. This is my advice and also caution. This PCA, one of the articles, this 19, has power to regulate its own self and its own matters, especially of morality. That's how the shift cards could are allowed. And I wanted even churches to have shift card codes, but they didn't want it. But the thing is this, moderator, the freedom of worship is absolute if it does not overstep on another freedom. If your freedom does not jeopardize my freedom, you can enjoy your freedom of articulation and of expression as much as possible. The, what we are now trying to regulate is freedom of expression. So I would think the status should remain the way it is. Let people insult each other if they want. Uh, <laughs> because that's all they do. And, but, the question, and, and, but we must all ask around that if people feel injured and hurt, they can resort to outside the church and go to court because even though it is a matter domestic. Because if you could go to, on this case, it is a matter, it's a domestic matter of the PCA. Let's the PCA ministers insult each other the way they want. But the thing is that to regulate, you might regulate some freedom of worship, not worship, of expression that might save this church one time. It's good more that I would like to, not to regulate that in any way, but leave people to express, according to the Kenya Constitution, UN Constitution, AU Constitution, let freedom be protected, even the freedom in, in, in the PCA, uh, which people now enjoy. I, I, it hurts me more than anybody else, but I, I let people enjoy their freedom. Moderator. Okay. Once again, is the decision taken? Yes. Taken? Yes. Why then don't we refer it as an issue to the business committee to give guidance and leadership over the matter? Thank you. Instead of maybe, since we are a bit divided and I don't want us now to physically vote, because by physically voting maybe we would be able to know who has, who has carried the day. So why don't we refer it as a matter that needs guidance from the, to the, from the business committee? Is that, will that be better? Yes. Okay, next resolution then. So it's taken to that level. 
number five, is it? Uh, this GA notes with great concern alcoholism and drug menace in the country. Father, this year instructs the business committee in conjunction with the health board to work towards the drugs and HIV, AIDS and drug control desk uh, to be fully refreshed, to be a fully fresh department and report in the GSC 2025. Taken. Yes. This GA notes with thanks to God that the church has started to regain clout on our schools. This GA instructs the business committee to ensure the placement of religious education secretaries in every region uh, in every region takes place and report in the GSC 2025. Taken. Seven, this GA notes that the world continues to change very fast and you are now in the artificial intelligence era. Father, father the GA instructs the institutions of higher running like Puea, Rubate and other church affiliated colleges to incorporate the artificial intelligence in their running and training for relevance and competence. Taken. Yes. Number eight, this GA note with concern the neglected universities ministry and instruct the youth ministry and Christian education to come up with, a more, creative, with more creative ways on how we can have a strong university ministries. Taken. Yes. Number nine, this GA notes with concern that the group's ministries have not worked as envisioned. This GA instructs the business committee to look into ways of refurting the groups to their former structure to spice up the ministries. Taken? Yes. Taken? Yes. No, I hear no. Mm -hmm. no. No is louder. I heard like the no was louder, so you can't amend if it's dropped. You can only amend if it's Okay, number 10, this year, this year note with concern that there is an upset of regal issues facing the church and some of the parochial areas are losing property because they cannot afford legal services. Further, this GA instructs the business committee through the finance uh, committee and Presbyterian Foundation to see how a common kitty can be raised to cater for these cases. Taken? 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 Yes. No. Proceed. Uh, number 11, this GA note with concern the new thread that post threat to Christian Farius. Father, this GA instructs the training committee to set apart a theological panel to do a research and give proper advice to the church concerning the upcoming threats. Yes. Number 12, this GA recognizes the act activation of the JPRC department by the second GAC of the 23rd General Assembly. Father, the GAC, the GA appreciates the work done in forming JPRC as other church departments and ministries. Taken. Yes. By 13, this GA appreciates the efforts by the JPRC department to train a total of 175 mediators since July 2023. Father, this GA instructs parishes and presbyteries to consider investing in mediation and paralegal training for all ministers, elders, and other readers within their jurisdictions. Taken. Yes. Amendment? In the last statement moderator and the assembly in Medavi, I thank you. In the last statement, this GA instructs parishes and presidents to consider investing in mediation and parallel training to all ministers, elders, and that. Then encourages, where is that? This GAC appreciates the effort by JP, not, JP, not JPRC, is the mediators, yes. Father, this GA instructs parishes and presidents to consider in the, investing in mediation. The moment you have instructed, then they don't consider. So unless we say this GAC encourages parishes and parishes to consider. So we use encourages and consider. So I'm amending the GA encourages parishes and parishes to consider investing. So I am amending instructs to encourages. Taken. Yes. Okay. okay. Number 14. 
Number 14, uh, taking note that JPRC department is developing the JPRC manual and logo, this GA instructs the department to speed up the development of the manual and logo to guide the department operations at all levels. Taken. 15, this GA recognizes the good work our ordained PCA ministers are doing in their teaching at Puea. This GA instructs that those who are full-time lecturers be assigned parishes as second ministers to support them in their calling. Taken. Taken. Dropped. Finally, finally, uh, this GA note with concern. Okay, silence, please. This year, note with concern that newly ordained ministers and elders are being erected as presbyterian and parish leaders, respectively. This year, instructs that newly ordained ministers and elders be allowed to serve for at least three years before being erected as presbytery and session leaders. Yes. Taken. Yes. It's a yes. Yes. Moderator, those are the wow, too late. solutions. Yes. You have an additional resolution? Additional resolution. What concern do you have? And I am now we are now disadvantaged because half of the house is in darkness. Dr. Mubui, what is your concern? Additional resolution. Additional one, okay. Thank you, moderator and uh, the commissioners. This GA notes with concern the erosion of academic standards in the church. Therefore, this GA instructs the business committee to ensure there is a full time substantive director of training and personnel development for academic consultancy, advice, and cooperation. Taken? Yes. Taken? No. Albert Gedenji? <laughs> this GA recognizes the good work that our church groups have been involved in. The SGA resolves to review the resolution on groups restructuring and instructs the business committee to expedite the matter to barrier act on behalf of this GA and report in the next GAC. Yes. I, I don't know whether the matter is coming up in the review that uh, it ought to be presented. I don't know whether it's coming up. If it's coming up, then it shall be duplication. I'm Mod not sure. Moderate, I... Moderator, I think uh, we can take that one. If it comes at the review, then uh, the review will be the one to be considered above this one. But uh, since... We never have that language. Okay. You are now in order. <laughs> Every joy. Thank you, sir. This General Assembly would be committing an illegality to the Constitution if we go that way. The way is that this issue be taken to the presbyteries through the barrier act, which would mean the Secretary General of this church will write letter to the presbyteries. You finish the order. Pre proceed. The Secretary General will write a letter to the presbyteries communicating the resolution 
of this General Assembly to the presbyteries to consider that resolution with a few putting in their mind. What we want them think, let us give them freedom. Okay. And the General Assembly, I thought, moderator, with due fairness, what was proposed by Leverett Shem was coming so that uh, I will go through the business and the same will be communicated to the presbyteries. We have uh, moderator uh, debated on the issues of the group for a longer time, and uh, the proposal is to go through the structure. So we are informed, moderator, and we are waiting for it to vote for it. So do we go by the resolution as proposed? Yes. Do we? No, remove the mic. <laughs> it's only me who has the mic. <laughs> Take it as the energy is proposing? Yes. Okay. Okay. Moreta, I think Additional resolution? Very good to do. Thank you, moderator and the assembly. This GA appreciates the benefit of the partnership between church and the family bank. Further, this GA directs the finance committee to ensure that the proceeds from the partnership be channeled to individual presbyteries and parishes. Taken? Taken? You are lukewarm. So it's, it's like you have not convinced them. It appears like they are not convinced. You want to persuade them. We may spend too much time on it. So let it rest. Let it rest for now. Okay, I think we are done. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, moderator. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Here we Okay, we are trying to, cons we are consulting, wondering whether you still look energized. <laughs> it's like you are starting. What would you wish? Just like the other one. You want a report, a report, just like the other one. You want to adjourn? Okay. I guess that's the way we should go because of uh, time. Again, that area, they will need to check on the, on the lights. It's rather dark there. I, there must be mosquitoes behind the pillars, I guess. So I, maybe we can have other, other reports tomorrow. Yeah, moderator, uh, I think it is in order for us to continue. The only one report which we are to do today was um, the reports of the clerks of the assembly. So moderator, I agree with you that we can push it for tomorrow uh, so that uh, we give people less. It was a long day for them because we came very early. Thank you. I think we take that advice. So any announcements? Thank you, Moderator and the Assembly. We have some few announcements. One, we have a lost identity card for Irene Wangari. Please, if you know this person, if you are the one, ensure that you get it from our, our desk there where our secretaries are. Number two is that we have uh, the communications department desk and other exhibitors that are out there. We encourage you to visit their tents, see what they are.
be around, therefore support them. Uh, please, as we finish and retire because of the weather, please let's take care of ourselves as we drive, as we walk, so that we are safe. Be more prayerful. We were reminded that we must continue to remember that we are in the supreme spiritual warfare point because we are in the supreme court of this church. And therefore, I invite us to pray. Tomorrow, Bible exposition is at 8 a.m. I want to encourage us to be as ready and as punctual as we were today so that you can be able to dispense the matters that we have tomorrow. Thank you and God bless you. We have Bible study as from 8 a.m. It leaves the main sanctuary. I hope we will fit in the main sanctuary. Um, but, but let's go there tomorrow, 8 a.m., and see how it turns out to be. So tomorrow, Bible study, 8 a.m., as per the docket main sanctuary. I guess, is there any other announcement? No other announcements. So, good worship, hospitality, worship. What do we do next? Hospitality. There was tea we didn't take. Yoni Denny. Could have dinner. I don't know who dinner, dinner people will take where they go. So, what are the arrangements, Elder Mogo? Good evening. Uh, for those of us who have not taken tea, tea is still there. And this is how we are going to take it. The GA officials and their spouses, past moderators and their spouses, former SGs and DSGs and spouses, they will go back here. At the back, that is where your tea is. The business committee members, you take your tea in your usual tent near the school. The GA planning committee and secretariat, you take your tea at the session room. Those are the, all the others. We have the tents outside there. That is how we take our tea. We wish we were. Let us pray for the tea. Our Father and our God, we thank you this evening for giving us the strength to sit and listen and to discuss. And now we are grateful that you have given us a cup of tea and something to bite with it to refresh in our bodies. We pray that you may bless it as we take it. Remember those who don't have and provide unto their needs. This we pray, briefing and trusting in Jesus' name. There's a performer here of your performance as far as sex is concerned. That you remember the president talked about it. So this is presidential. You are supposed to be at 75%. A number of you are below 75%. By GA, you should not even be allowed to participate in GA proceedings if you are below 75%. I see some who are at 59, some at 60, 51, 49, meaning then there will be, this matter will be followed tomorrow. So talk to your people back home. If you have any check, submit it because the percentages can change. So tomorrow, call your people back home, tell them you are in trouble. You might be denied the privileges of participating in the meeting and there's an, a night that is also coming 
abash. Those are the kind of losses that you experience. So call back home. If you have any check, where are the finance people? Are they here? You are up there. The, the finance people have a desk up there. Visit them and check on your performance. Even if it's not light now, so that you do not get into trouble. Because this will be followed, is it tomorrow? Tomorrow. tomorrow. We'll deal with this item. Okay. Now we have who? Worship? For a closing prayer? Who is doing it? Reverend Kaira, Janet, who is who? Uh, Janet has been delegated to do it. Okay, maybe we could be up studying. Ah, tuombe. Baba katika jina la mwanao Yesu Kristo. Tuasema ni asanti. Ni kwa sababu umekuwa pamoja nasi kuanzia asubuhi tulipoanza. Natazama tuko tamati ya siku ya leo. Tunakupa sifa, tunakupa utukufu kwa mambo yote ambayo yametendeka, mambo yote ambayo tumenena, mambo yote ambayo tumeelekezana. Tunakupa sifa na utukufu ni kwa sababu umekuwa katikati yetu. Na sasa tunapofumukana, tunajileta katika mikono yako ili ulinzi wako ukawe juu yetu. Safari zetu za kurudi manyumbani na mahali ambapo tunapumzikia Mungu tunaziweka katika mikono yako tulinde katika hizi barabara na Mungu ukituruhusu kuona siku ya kesho na hata mkutano ambao utakao kuwa kuendelea kesho sifa zote na adhama zitakuwa ni zako umbali huu Bwana tumekuona pokea sifa za mioyo yetu na hili ni ombi la imani kupitia kwa Yesu Kristo Aliye Bwana na tena mkombozi wa maisha yetu. And now may the grace Moderator the hospitality committee is requesting to remain behind. Hospitality committee remain behind. Remain studying, uh, uh, remain studying as we exit. Mutarata. One two 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 mic check mic check one two mic check one two okay. yes. all right viewers wherever you're watching us from that has been a very long day of the presbyterian church of east africa 24th General Assembly, the opening day. Uh, there's been a lot that has been happening right from the morning uh, when President William Ruto graced this particular occasion. And uh, just to remind you that he also came with his deputy, that is Rigadi Gashagwa, who is a member of the PCA Church. And uh, a lot has been happening all through the day. Uh, the General Assembly is the top organ 
uh, in terms of leadership within the PCA Church and uh, the, 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 the delegates who have been here today have been uh, discussing matters related to the church and governance of the church, quite important topics and important matters that have, ar that have arose uh, during this particular conversation and I trust you've been following up uh, to understand what exactly has been happening all through the day. Just to give you a glimpse of what transpired right in the morning, we saw the installation of the 24th General Assembly moderator, who is um, uh, Right Reverend Thegu Mutai, uh, was installed this particular morning uh, in front of hundreds of delegates, and including President William Bruton, his deputy, uh, Regade Gashagwa. We also saw the installation of the new Deputy Secretary General, uh, with Reverend uh, John Bai, was installed today as well as also, uh, you know, being uh, uh, inducted into his office officially and also handed uh, a new official car that uh, was the climax of his installation this particular day. We also saw, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, the Secretary General of the Presbyterian Church of East Africa also taking on his second term uh, because he serves a six year of three years renewable term as well as the Deputy Secretary General serves a four year term and the moderator serves um, a three-year term that is uh, renewable twice. Sorry to say the Secretary General serves six years non-renewable term and they will be trying to you know, catch up with the new Deputy Secretary General uh, who has been a, uh, installed into office. There is so much expectation from the Presbyterians, much expectations from the Kenyans at large because he is also be representing the church at the top level leadership that is the General Assembly. We'll be trying you know, to speak to some of them but today we'll be speaking to the Deputy Secretary General who has just been installed this uh, this day and rather this morning in front of hundreds of delegates as well as President William Ruto and his Deputy Rigadi Gashagwa. So I'll be welcoming him uh, at least uh, for us to have a word with him uh, you know uh, uh, in regards to how he feels about this particular day and um, you know uh, how the day has been and uh, here's my colleague Vincent Kerosi. What do you make of the day and how's it been for you uh, you know following up uh, these proceedings as well and you know trying to catch up with what people are saying is a uh, government leadership style within the PCA church. I mean, I mean the president was here, the whole government was here today and that is to tell you that they respect the Presbyterian church way of leading things and of course being here today to show it all and to be witnesses of how the church is run is something that we cannot take for granted and Sambu right about now I don't, I don't want us to take a lot of time but I want to introduce for the very first time, for his very first media interview, the Deputy Secretary General of the 24th General Assembly, and he is here, Reverend uh, John Mbai Morag. Yes. Na na pena kiwili sana na fikiri tu switch na ingi kwa kiswili ya mchungaji karibu sana and we want to take this opportunity to say thank you very much for according as the very first media interview. Karibu sana. How are you feeling today, Rev? I want to say that uh, this is a great day. My name is John Bai, just installed as the Deputy Secretary General of PCEA on this 9th day of April 2024. And the Kerosi and your team, CAC TV viewers, I am so, so grateful, so happy before the Lord for this opportunity. I mean, najua ni siku ambayo imekuwa na hisia nyingi sana. Ni siku ambayo ulikuwa umeisubiria, najua kwamba ulikuwa umejipanga, lakini hisia zako ulipokuwa unaingia asubuhi hapa zilikuwa namna gani? Na sasa ulipovalishwa kabisa na kupewa mamlaka ya kuwa naibu katibu mkuu wa kanisa, hisia zako zilikuwa namna gani? Ah, ni lazima niseme ya kwamba wakati unakuja kwa zoezi kama hili unakuwa na hisia ambazo ziko hamsini ya msini kwa sababu hata kama zoezi la kuteuliwa lilikuwa limeisha uchaguzi ulikuwa unafanywa leo na kama ni uchaguzi kama uchaguzi mwingine wowote ule unaweza kukubaliwa unaweza kukataliwa kwa hivyo uwezi kuwa mia kwa mia ya kwamba unajua ni nini itaendelea kwa hivyo ni lazima wewe unawashawasha hapa na pale ukijiuliza kutakuwa namna gani lakini ni shukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya utaratibu wa kanisa ili la Kipresbyterian kwa sababu mambo yalifuatiliwa kama vile yamewekwa katika katiba yetu na watu waliweza kuunga mkono zoezi lililofanywa na kamati iliyowekwa na wakaweza kunipea wadhifa wa kuwa naibu mdogo wa katibu mkuu. 
labda ndio turejee kwa mambo kutakuwa na mambo mengi ambayo unasarajiwa kufanya kwa na mbele lakini jambo la kwanza kabisa kwa yule ambaye helewi leo hii ndio umeanza rasmi uh, mhula wako huu kesho ni siku nyingine ambayo tunaendelea na vikao hivi vikuu kesho ujukumu lako kuli itakuwa lini sasa kuendelea mbele kazi kubwa sana ya naibu katibu mkuu ni kusaidiana na katibu mkuu katika kuendesha kongomano kuu la kanisa kwa hivyo kesho kazi yangu ile kubwa kabisa ni kuwa nyuma kwa nyuma hapa na katibu mkuu kwa mambo yote ya kuongoza na kuendesha um, kongomano hili lakini pia kuna yale mambo ambayo yako katika meza ya naibu katibu mkuu kwa hivyo kuna zile reports ambazo zinakuja katika meza yake kuna mambo ambayo ni ya kuleta uh, kuendelea vizuri kwa mkutano kuhakikisha ya kwamba kama kuna matangazo yanahitajika kupeano kama kuna jambo limekuja inakuwa ni kazi ya naibu katibu mkuu kuhakikisha ya kwamba mambo hayo yameendelea vizuri na kushauri katibu mkuu kwa mambo yote ambayo yanaendelea katika chama hasa katika kokomano hili Ndio kwamba baadaye tutakuja kuandaa kikao kizuri na wewe sasa kuwapatia watazamaji na washirika wa kanisa hili la Kipristo la Afrika Mashariki muda wa kusikiliza zaidi uh, ndoto na ruwazo ulionayo kwa ajili ya kanisa ndani ya miaka mine ya lakini kwa kugusia tu wanaweza tarajia nini kutoka kwa uongozi wako Nataka kuwaomba wa humini, viongozi wafanyikazi wa kanisa la Kipresbyterian kuwa na mambo makubwa wanaoyangoja kutoka kwa katibu mdogo mpya ambaye ameingia katika kazi kwa sababu naibu katibu mkuu kazi moja yake yeye ndiye kuwa anawaangalia wafanyikazi wote katika kanisa hili he is the human resource officer of the church kwa hivyo jambo la kwanza ni kuangalia wafanyikazi na masira yao na kuona vile wanaendelea na ninapochukua jukumu hilo ni vyema kusema ya kwamba kuna vitengo vingi hasa parokia zetu ambazo kwa wakati huu zina upungufu mkubwa sana wa wachungaji kwa sababu tumetoka katika msimu wa covid na tukuweza kuwa na training ya wachungaji kama vile inapaswa kuendelea kwa hivyo kuna mzigo mkubwa sana wakihakikisha ya kwamba kanisa hili limeweza kuingia kwa zoezi la haraka sana kuona ya kwamba tuko na wachungaji wa kutosha katika kanisa letu kanisa hili linaendelea kupanuka kwa hivyo kuna parokia ambazo zinahitajika kupasuliwa na hayo mambo yote yanaendelea katika ofisi ya naibu katibu mkuu na ni vyema kusema ya kwamba mambo yananingoja yana kuna mambo ambayo yanahusiana na hospitali zetu ambayo yako katika meza ya naibu katibu mkuu na mambo hayo yananingoja kwa sababu mambo ya afya ni mambo ambayo ni muhimu sana katika uh, taifa lolote lile kwa hivyo kuna mambo mengi sana ambayo yanangoja katika ofisi yangu. Na tukimalizia tunajua kwamba kabla uingie sasa katika hii ofisi ambayo unayo ulikuwa pia na ofisi nyingine ambayo ulikuwa, ulikuwa unazishikilia kulikuwa na communication department kulikuwa na car insurance sijui kama majukumu hayo bado unakwenda nayo upande ule mwingine ama kuna yule ambaye sasa ame take over na atakuwa na kuwakilisha na kuwakilisha majukumu mengine vilivyo. Uh, ni kwa kweli nilikuwa na majukumu mengi sana katika kitengo chetu cha mawasiliano katika kitengo chetu cha mbima lakini vyema kusema kwamba kanisa limewaweka watu wa kushikiria indara zile kuna mchungaji John Gatu ambaye anashikiria indara ya mawasiliano kuna mchungaji Enri Kaira ambaye anashikiria kitengo chetu cha mbima kwa hivyo majukumu hayo yashachukuliwa na viongozi wengine wa kanisa hili hata hivyo uh, naibu katibu mkuu ana jukumu la kuhakikisha kwamba kila kitengo kila department kwa sababu wale ambao wanafanya kazi pale ni wafanyikazi wa kanisa hili ambao wana wako katika meza ya naibu katibu mkuu kwa hivyo pia hata kama nimetoka bado niko pale kwa sababu wanaofanya kazi pale ni wafanyikazi katika department ya uh, HR na lako la mwisho unapomalizia sasa Langu la mwisho ni kumshukuru Mungu sana kwa nafasi ambayo yamenipa leo nilikuwa na kiongozi kutoka kule Narok ambaye mwaka wa tisa aliona mimi nikiwa kiongozi wa General Assembly na aliposikia mambo hayo yametendeka leo alitoka kutoka Narok na akakuja na familia yake kukuja kushuhudia yale mambo ambayo yalitabiri miaka tano ambayo imepita pia ninashukuru familia yangu mke wangu watoto wangu kwa sababu wamenishikiria sana wafanyikazi katika indara zangu ambazo nimefanyia kazi pale end office communication uh, car insurance na hata 
runinga ya Kak TV ambayo nilihusika sana katika kuianzisha nataka kuwashukuru sana kwa sababu walishikilia maono yangu na nilipowapatia maono yoyote yale waliashikilia wakaenda nayo kwa hivyo ni sema ya kwamba indara ambazo nimefanyia kazi zimechangia sana wafanyikazi hao wamechangia sana mimi kuonekana na kanisa ya kwamba naweza kuwa kiongozi ni washukuru sana kerosi na kikundi chako na wafanyikazi wote wa PCI ni washukuru sana viongozi wetu wa kanisa la PCI wa kiongozi wa sasa na monitor wa 24th General Assembly uh, Right Reverend Dego Mutai Dr. Waienya uh, bwana Ndumo na wafanyikazi wetu na viongozi wote na ninaomba ya kwamba tuwe na ushirikiano mkubwa kwa sababu tunatarajiwa kufanya mengi na kanisa hili na taifa letu na jamii kwa jumla asante sana tukushukuru vipi bwana DSG na tunakutakia kila laheri unajua sisi ni wanao tumekuwa pamoja miaka hii yote katika runinga hii umekuwa baba yetu na sasa hivi kutoka kwetu pia runinga kak tusema pongezi na kila laheri asante sana asante sana asante kerosi bila shaka mtazamaji huyo amekuwa ni naibu katibu mkuu wa kanisa la PCEM mchungaji uh, John Mbaya ambaye ndo kama hivyo ameanza kazi hii leo kuanzia leo amechukua majukumu kamili ameanza kuyatimiza hii leo katika kikao hiki kikuu ama kongamano kuu hili ambalo linaendelea hapa katika kanisa la St uh, Andrews uh, jijini Nairobi sasa ni naye hapa ndugu yangu hapa na mtangazaji mwenza Chris Sambu umesikia maneno ya naibu katibu mkuu na tunashukuru sana kwa sababu umetupatia maneno ya kwanza kabisa katika runinga ya kaka. Anakaa mchangamfu kweli na mbaya na onekana atakuwa mchapakazi eh. Jamani mchapakazi kwa wengi wanaomjua nimesikia kwamba walikuwa wameshikilia majukumu mengi sana kwenye eh, makao makuu ya kanisa la uh, PCA kwa sababu uh, ili nafasi ambayo amepata ni nafasi ambayo inahitaji yeye kuwa makini zaidi ama kuwajibika zaidi manake ukiangalia ile nafasi ya naibu katibu mkuu wa kanisa la PC ni kwamba katika kila department ama kitengo cha kanisa hilo lazima wewe uhakikishe kwamba kitengo hicho kinafanya kazi kwa hivyo yeye ni mchapakazi nafikiri wamempunguzia majukumu ile umempa jukumu kubwa zaidi kwa hivyo ni e, sisi tuseme pongezi kwa sababu amesema kwamba maono ya Kak TV alikuwa nayo alikuepo pia kama mkurugenzi mkuu aliongoza kama 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 mkuu wa uh, wa televisheni yenyewe na pia ni mwanzilishi mkuu mwanzilishi tuseme kwa hivyo sisi ni kumtakia kila laheri na kukamilisha tu siku kwa kusema kwamba kila kitu sasa kipo sawa viongozi washachaguliwa kwa hivyo kesho ni masuala mengine ya kujadili miswada ambayo inahusu kanisa miswada ambayo inahusu uongozi masuala tata na masuala ibuka yote atakuwa anajadiliwa kwa hivyo mtazamaji aweze kufuatilia hapa juu tutakuwa tuna tunamfanyia tuna kwa kimombo nasema breakdown tutakuwa tunavunja vunja kila hatua ambayo itakuwa inafanyika hiyo kesho kumweleza nini ambacho kitakuwa kinaendelea yapi ambayo itakuwa inajadiliwa kwa hivyo hana budi hila kusalia hapa hapa hadi kesho mtazamaji ndio kama hivyo kutoka kwetu twasema asante sana kwa kuwa pamoja jenasi siku hii ya leo tulianza matangazo kabla ya saa mbili asubuhi moja kwa moja kutoka kanisa la mtakatifu Andrew loko jijini Nairobi hapa ambapo kongamano hili kwa limkoa likifanyika mtazamaji akaja rais pamoja na naibu wake wakawa hapa wakafuatilia nafikiri mwenzangu Sambu alikuwa amekuelezea matukio ambayo yalitukia katika kikao hicho na na zile hotuba ambazo walitoa rais pamoja na naibu wake na viongozi wengine ambao walikuwa hapa na tungependa kuzirudia lakini tukwaidi kwamba kesho tutakuwa tena papa hapa kuanzia saa mbili asubuhi katika matangazo mengine ya kufuatiliza tu kongamano hili ku la kanisa la PCE kutoka kwangu Vincent Kerosi na mwenzangu Chris Sambu sema kwa heri au tazamaji mwema wa vipindi vile vosalia vya runinga shukrani siku tupatane papa hapa tukuletee matangazo ya moja kwa moja kwa heri kwa sasa mtazamaji